Michael Orr, to Falter Rival Lake and Choco, uh, Park, Park and uh, uh, Emmerha, uh, Old School of Bonnery and Shaw Malfarsha, Jeshkar Balfarsha, the Nian Art, August Curran, Kalashi uh, Ola, August Danska Bank, Falter Rival Lake, Gucci Clay, Kianish, Corn McGeehan. We have the Corn McGeehan, our McGeehan Cup final once again in the dub. I think this year is now the sev sixth or seventh one in a row that we've had in the dub. We have been here since the casement closed down. And again, facilities are perfect. The pitch looks in perfect condition there. There was a good bit of rain earlier on, but I don't think it has affected it too much. On co-commentary with me tonight will be Damien McCallan, who has been in charge of most of these boys in Antrim underage development squads and teams uh, in the last couple of years. And Tafalcha Rodenshaw D. Gourmet Margaret, Seamus. Right. Um, um, what's your view of the pitch? Just as looking well, isn't it? It is, couldn't be better. Actually, on first... Um, impressions you may think it's a 3G pitch it's that it's in that good nick so uh, yeah it's gonna and, and I think the wee bit of rain that we just had will, will sort of loosen the pitch up well for a hurling match so perfect conditions okay uh, the two teams have been here maybe over an hour and they've been out and warmed up and etc and I'll just go through the teams with you now Collision uh, Akrusha Kusnapasha Balya and Kastil in goals Tiernan Smith uh, full back line is Ruben McLean number two Endo Og McGarry Every three, August, every Carrot, Ronan Laverty. The half back line is Connell McGlynn, we're number five, John McAllister from Christian Doll, we're in six, and Conleth McKinley, McKinley from uh, number seven. Uh, two Ballycastle pl club players at number eight, Seamus McCauley and Sean Brogan at number nine. Again, two more Ballycastles in the half forward line, Joe McToll is wearing number ten, Fergal McKiernan is eleven, and Michael O'Boyle from Glenariff is wearing number 12 and we have a full forward line from Loch Giel has been devastating this year in the club championship, in the minor club championship in Antrim here. Rian McMullen will be wearing number 13, 14 is Owen McGrath and 15 is Christy McGarry. Uh, Skull Warren, the Mariahra Malfarsje and in goals we have, we have quite a few St Gauls players and one of them is in goals, Aidan Mullen. Uh, full back line is Owen May at number 2. Number three is Dan Daniel Murray. Number four is Dultak Wilson. Um, half back line Connor Connor Boyle. Centre half back Sarsfields Caelan McKiernan and Daniel Churchill. Uh, middle of the field two Rosser players Owen Trainer at Ever a Hawk and Ever a Knee Andrew McLean. And uh, half forward line is Rory Murray, Gary McElhatton and Dara Delaney. And the full forward line St Paul's player Caelan O'Diffin. Number 14 is Dara Murphy and St John's Danon McHugh is corner forward and he's joint captain along with Keelan McKiernan. 
we're just almost ready to start here um, and just a very quick call from you uh, Damien I'll put you on the spot here before it starts off here you have had most of them through the development squads etc uh, you know the quality of all the players that are right in the pitch almost there so who would you call here a very quick call I know that your past people of Skull were in the monitor though uh, it makes it hard for me to make a, 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 an impartial call but um, I suppose if you're looking on past history the Cross and Pison are probably the favourites I would say today um, I know they did play in the group game earlier in the the, the groups and St Mary's were victorious but there was a lot of players missing that day kind of maybe a bit of a damn squib when it came to it but both teams are loaded with quality all over the field so I wouldn't be surprised if we got a humdinger of a game tonight and to be honest with you it being a final it could be anybody's so well, that, that's what I was just going to go to there the McGeehan Cup final is probably the highlight of all of these boys careers They're, this is what they play this is what they really go to school for some of them it's it's brilliant that I remember back I was won two McGeehan Cups with St Mary's I was lucky enough to play in eighty eight and eighty nine and it's the greatest experience that I had as a hurler. You're 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 hurling four or five days a week, travelling all around the country, playing with quality hurlers that um you may be playing against in your clubs. So it's a it's a pinnacle of their of their school of their school career. Yeah, um do you think that the occasion might get to a few of the players here? It may do, but I would say that the preparations made by both sets of managements will have um, prepared for that. You know, they're, they're, the management are experienced, they've done this many times before, both sets. So they'll have their routine, they've done their warm-up, they've been out earlier. You see them on the pits now, they're going through their, their final preparations. So that all takes away from those nerves and allows them to focus on the game. But you don't know until that ball's thrown in. Two semi-finals, the low both player, uh, both sets kept through it. Well, I won't say very comfortably in the case of Cross and Passion, but uh, Cross and Passion got a tougher game than St Mary's in the semi-final. Will that have any bearing on the final? I would, I would say if you had your choice, you would prefer to have Cross and Passion semi-final because it was a tight game. It put it up, the St Killians put it up to them, whereas in the other game, the match was kind of over near enough by half time, and St Mary's just pushed on. But again, on reflection, you don't know. You know, um, it'll be after the game we'll point to these things and, and, and say that the reason for winning and losing are the other. So it just depends on who makes the most of their experience up to now. Right, we're ready now. I think we're just looking down at the St Mary's team here. They're in the huddle there. Uh, referee Colin Murray from Down has uh, uh, called. I think the anthem will be starting in a moment or two. I see Bally Castle on the other side are just breaking up. But uh, St Mary's are ready, I think. No, it looks like they're going to stay in the huddle for the for the national nice anthem. Okay. Yeah, they're going to stay together. And I think Ballycastle are going to stay together at the other end of the field. So we'll have the anthem in a minute or two. Just looking around the stand here, it seems to be pretty full. Yeah, starting round one at this stage. Yeah, 
I know they maybe can't appreciate that as much by looking down on the pitch and seeing across the other side, but we're in the stand side this year. Or in the vein. Very good, we're ready for 2019 McGeehan Cup Final. And it's important to remember that not one of these boys has a McGeehan medal already, whereas you mentioned there, Damien, that uh, you played in teams that already won medals and then you won your second one yourself. None of these boys have actually won it because we've had a good changeover this past few years with five different winners in the last five years. So it's 2014 since uh, Crossing Passion's last title and 2016 since St Mary's last one. We're all ready to go here, Colin Murray's ready and the ball is in and the game is on. Usual scramble in the first couple of seconds here trying to break. And I'm not sure who's got through there. I'm looking there and I'm seeing Endo McGarry, the Ballycastle full back, is out around the middle of the field now. I don't know whether that's he followed his player or whatever. There's a ball's gone down into the corner. And it's way so it's gone, it's too far played too far and it is important to remember that this is quite a tight pitch anybody that's played here in the last couple of years will know that it's quite a tight pitch for uh, for uh, McGee and Cup final uh, looks that's like a, a good puck out from, from uh, Aidan Mullen it looks like both teams are playing a sweeper at this stage Seamus yeah. I think we'll see when the team settles out here in a second that's Donna McHugh with a good strike Donna McHugh and it's gone wild so A wide each, first minute or two, T testing the ground on one thing or another. But look at those puck outs, they're going out over what we would call halfway, but it's really the 265s meet at the halfway line, so, you know, the pitch is tight. It is, and it will have an effect on the game. We're looking at that there, that I think that's uh, Kaelin McKiernan over taking the sideline. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Kaelin. Straight down into he's the got corner. A, he's got a good right into the corner. That's on the Kaelin O'Duffin. He goes for a point Duffin from where it's going Kiel. short. It's gone into the area. Is there going to be a score result from this? What a nice touch. But I think that's it's a great is it 12. It's gone. It's that's not gone even short. gone short. Dara Delaney. Dara Delaney. It's not even gone wide. A TT with the ball over um, the end line. Yeah, yeah. It's not like him. Normally very accurate with his puck outs. Yeah, but a wee bit of nerve. Maybe the yeah. You know, when you're over hitting shots, you're, you know, you're panicking a wee bit to try and just make an impression of the first ball or two. And what you just said earlier, Seamus, these two teams being in the final for the first time, you can imagine both teams being like that, especially for the first 10 minutes or so until yeah. the game settles down. So. Mm -hmm. Here we go with Caelan McKernan again. Another great Another sideline cut. Sideline. But it's bre breaking out this time to. Um, Ruben McLean, he doesn't get it up, I don't think. It's still still loose ball. And it's picked up this time by... Rory Murray. Murray Murray. Rory He's Murray. on the run. Is he going to get it clear? We're 45 metres out. It's within the range, but... President not going to get... I don't think that's going to go wide, is it? Mm, no, it's still in play, by the looks of it. Uh, and uh, that was well cleared. Michael O'Boyle, it looks like. Oh, that's, yes, Chris that's Chris the first, first. Christy McGarry. Christy McGarry. Bricky is his nickname. Great score. Right. Good score. Good score. Direct score as well. Well played out of defence. The first real attack for Cross and Pison. Bang, score. Yeah.
I think there's going to be a good few of these scrappy type moments there. Yeah, Owen That's Trainer plays the ball out. across. Well done, Owen Trainer. Rory Murray's got it now. Ah, it's lovely ball. Gary McElhatton. Gary McElhatton and Gary McElhatton. Pings it over the bar. Over. Great score, St Mary's. That's a good, good team score. Yeah, good reaction from mm -hmm. Ross and Pison score. And so we're one point each after just coming up to three minutes here of play. I think that, uh, you know, a player got loose there, but we're they are trying to play man-to-man. -man. Whether they're playing in positions man-to-man -man or not, you know, it's not uh, not exactly a free player out, a sweeper. Or are we? Yeah, well, it looks like, uh, is that Jimmy McCauley? I think that's Jimmy playing the He's sweeper. He's back into centre half back mo yeah it is Seamus McCauley I think he cleared that ball for the point from Chris Avignari oh. as well Cross and Pouch might be in here mm. that's well defended Kale McKernan on the ball again very strong player he came out very well tenacious. in his uh, number of times in the semi very skillful too very yeah. skillful Sarsfields yeah famous McKernan family McKernan family from Sarsfields yeah good body check there and number That's well let's be killing McKernan to take this for maybe go for a score or I would say it's Dan within his range out. yep Dan had been coming out for them in the other games but I think Keelan looks no, like Keelan he's confident took the long range ones in the St. Louis match in the semi-final so he should have the range here now he strikes well but it's, it's gone wide. wide it's gone wide he didn't really connect with well no he didn't he something funny about the lift yeah He's under this one again. Oh, he missed it. And Is Fergal's in. Wilson? Fergal McKiernan's on it. He's through and he pops it over a bar. Great took score, Fergal. Good man. Was that an easy option that he took for the point or is it better to take a point as early as this? I think it was probably a right option at this stage of the game. Yeah. Keep the scoreboard picking over, you know. Mm. That's a good pick, puck out from so Mullen. One trainer, good well catch. Taken, trainer. He bats it along. Yep. Gary and Michael Hatton again. again. Blocked down brilliantly. Well done. Ben Oak McGarry. And the Oak's going to oh, push right through. Oh, he's flying up the field here. Through one more. Plays it to himself, does he? <laughs> and he's still through. And that's out to uh, Ryan, Ryan McMullen. McMullen. He's, gonna, he's running into too much bother there. Unclear by St Mary's. Yep. And it's up to Kiel No Duffin. Oh, Seamus McCauley well, picked it up, but. Referee's going to have a word with Kilna Duffin here. Yeah, Seamus McCauley seems to be playing a sweeper in the half back line there for Bonnie Castle. Now, whether that really works or not depends on. At the minute, it seems like Daniel Churchill's free for St Mary's in that role. I don't know what that's to do with the, the free being taken, his man coming out to hit it. My God. This is within Michael O'Boyle's range. An excellent striker for ball, always has been. Glenara Fushings, stoops, and he strikes. It's getting the distance. And, and the accuracy, the well yep. done. Yep. Let's go, Michael. Six minutes gone. Or three points one up for Cross and Passion. Gary Merkel Hutton wins a break or knocks it down. He's back on the other break. That's and old McGarry seems to be getting out yeah. around the middle of the field that we would have expected him in the full back line. He's not in the full yeah. back line. Joe McToll on the ball now. Very skillful, smart wee hurler. Ah, Great ball out there. Should be Michael O'Boyle again. Yeah. No, no, he's not giving it. Right ball, one, one. But it was uh, Ballycastle found that wee bit of space though. Yeah. You know, and it maybe as players playing back or rather than pushing in. The break a ball, one again by Donna McGill. Very smart underneath yeah. it. Very clever, Ooh. very quick. He's yeah. away. That Michael again. Michael O'Boyle again, but Michael O'Boyle wide. And he didn't get the advantage, it's a free in. Right. Must have been clipped on behind there. Yeah. 
Michael O'Boyle, I think, will take this one. He's a great technique. He sets it up. Yeah. Good strike on him. Just the accuracy he let him down the last time. So yeah. he'd be hoping to adjust his range here. Yeah, he's going to pull back a wee bit. Sometimes that can annoy a free taker when they're, you know, they're set up to do something and then they're asked to go back a bit and reset again. But as I said before, he is a very, very good striker of the ball. And that looks one like it's tailing off the yeah. left. He's getting the distance okay, there's no problem with that there, but he's, you know, it's another wide. Well taken. Well done, Ryan McMullen again. Ryan McMullen, he was one of the stars of the semi final. And that one is short. Oh, keeper battered it out, he got away with it. Did he? Oh. No. Why he ball again. That was a, a, yeah. a I would say that's a chance the early chances, The early chances really have, you know, come to Ballycastle. They could yeah. have had two goals there. You think back to Fergal McKiernan taking this point. Um, they just seem to have a wee bit more composure in the forward line than Samiris do at the minute. Although Samiris did respond well with a point, so we'll see. Ryan one McGarry trainer, picked off, I think it was 1-7 in the, in the, from play in the semi-final. You know, he's... He really put in a big show for them. See, Liam Ball St. Mary, so it was a good yeah. block by Shamie McCauley there on Donald McGill. And we're looking at. Um, it's Donald McGill lining up. Right. I'm saying if you connect with this, it might be way in your reins, the way the people, the boys are able to take side in cuts these days. Okay, any strikes? Looks like it's going short. No, it's not. Oh! Hard luck there, Murphy that just had a hurl date, but it went wide. Yeah. I make it uh, three wides to Samiris and four to Cross and Passion. We're in the early stages, but you know, it's a lot of wides in the first ten minutes. Put it down to the nerve, Seamus, just. Yeah. So it's one nice trainer on the ball nice again. Ball. Samiris are working up but well at times. Cross and Passion of what? Plays it through to Gary Michael Hatton. He's in on goal if he can raise this. Gets a good connection. Keeper makes a great save, TT Smith. Rebounds it out. Looks like it's still in play. Come off a, a come off a crossbar. Yeah. And it's cleared. That was very, very sharp at TT. I think he knocked it yeah. and it went off a crossbar. Unlucky by Gary. Good connection. Not just not coming up there. No. It's Don Churchill. I think he's over it now. Michaela McKernan. Michaela McKernan first out That's of play. That's it, free up. And he takes a quick one. He's looking There's for Dara Murphy. He's into the space. And he's got it. Dara likes a wee bit of space. Yeah. We can do a bit of damage if you give him a space. He's away he's on his back. Plays nope. across. Shamey's there. Shamey McCall. He's in the right place. Pick it up. But he fumbled it. Free in. Bally Castle always have the players in there. It's free in. And Dara Delaney did well there. He was industrious enough yeah. to keep going to get the f get himself a free. So I would be surprised if Donald McGill didn't put this one over. Bring it to only one now mm -hmm. between the teams now. But Dara Murphy had the pace there to take on the player, go round him and go in and goal. So. Dan on McHill. Yeah. 3 2. 11 minutes gone, 12 minutes gone just on the clock here. And really, you know, it just hasn't warmed up yet. It's not very ball crossing Pison. Mikael Boyle again. Mikael Boyle's taking all the set plays here. Okay. 
I think this is this a free? No, sailing ball. Sailing. Yeah. He's taken it in, but it's stolen by the meter. You can argue it well. Blocked by Dirt Wilson. Clear it wasn't great. Still got there and that's Dara Delaney. Dara Delaney, Dara Delaney's getting that out further. Uh, Try to leave it, but it's not going to work. Conleth McKinley again, Conleth very McKinley strong out in out front. But they overhit the ball. It's gone into the corner. Is, is Owen May, one of the things coming. That's Owen May on the ball yep. now, coming out. I think it was uh, Delta Wilson at one. It was it. In yeah. The corner. That's Jamie McCauley with a rattle for a point. McCauley going for. Nope. Wade. Um. A lot of Ballycastle wides have come from well out the field, you know, where Samiris don't want to shoot around the middle of the field. They're working the ball in more, Yeah, they're, you know? they're being a wee bit, wee bit more methodical with yeah. the ball, definitely. Oh, that's Owen May there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is indeed. He won us free, I think, for a push yeah. in the back. So Keown's He's been up pulled the out of position. You're seeing players play pulling all over the pitch, you know, and... I think that goes down to the matchups that you mentioned earlier. You can see John McAuliffe, there's within the full back swap way into Oak McGarry. Yeah. He's on um, Donna McGill, or sorry, Dara Murphy. Mm -hmm. So Cross and Pison and St Mary's have obviously got their, their matchups. That's all the way. Great score. Caelan McKiernan. I mean, the two teams know each other very well, yeah. playing each other for six, seven years now. So And you're seeing each other right through the clubs as yeah. well. It's not that they're unknown players. No. TT long one. There's one trainer's under it. This is it. Delta, is it? Yeah. And he fumbles it. it. And it'll be punished. Not there. Joe McToll Joe coming McToll. across. Did he Joe pop McToll it over? Yeah, that's a beautiful point. Great score, Joe. That's a great point from the corner. Really stole. Now, one thing about Joe is the same. If you give him space yeah. and he's on the ball, he can, yeah. he can, he can dominate But it came you. from a defensive area, you know. Yeah. be interesting if Young Delta, he's quite young Delta, isn't he? He's only a fifth year. Yeah. To see if, you know, his confidence is hit by and like anything from that. Ah, he's a hardy beast in goals, man, so yeah. I think he should be all right. We'll see how he goes. That's Keanu That's Duffin on the ball now. Him. Slipped on the, the wet surface. Yeah, he's away. away. This boy goes on his back, you're not catching him. And away he goes. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be hit he's here. still going. Tight angle. Tight he goes angle. for it. And it's no, Wade. No. Wrong option there again, I suppose. Mm. Never you got, you, you know, he, he is very, very fast, but Shooting he went from right into the corner. angles very, very hard. Ball's played out now to Conor McGlynn. Short puck out. Straight down the lane. Side lane ball. Side lane ball then. Sideline's mm. taken right in again. So Donna McGill under it. Yep. Being marshalled well by uh, Ronan Laverty. Not giving them much space. Yeah, Conal McGlynn. Yep, Owen Trainer blocked it down. Yep. He's feeding his feet. He's, he's, he's netting the play rightly. Owen, every time he gets he it, he's looking for a, for a man. Again. Ball's one dropping one, short. One one. John McAllister and Dara Murphy. Bit of a wrestling match. Dara's on it. He gets a chance here. Looks like it's a penalty, penalty given. Penalty. Yep. It's Players took it down. John McAllister was caught one on one, full back. Yes, the defender got back in again, but. It was that initial off. ball that he. Yep. They're not winning the initial ball or, or blocking it out of the zone. That's you're, you're in trouble there if there's underneath. We've got that. a pace in the Samiris forward line too that's uh, troubling uh, their defence, and I think that's why the extra player is back there is, is to cut off that or to cut down the space for that run. They can't run into space, yeah. but they're, you know, it's, it's causing a problem. Dan and McGill. Donald McGill. And Donald has been playing senior this year for St John, so plenty of experience at mm. the, the top level, doing really well. R referee is having a word or a goalkeeper. Oh. Right, struggled very, very well, left handed there. And we have St Mary's really in the game now. We're looking at uh, 17 minutes gone. St Mary's won three to four points up. Um, and, you know, it's, they've only scored once from open play. 
and yet they're ahead. This might uh, wake Cross Christy, Compassion up. It? They've been. Christy McGarry. Yes. No, it's Ryan McMullen. Ryan McMullen. There's Cale McKernan back doing the donkey work again. Corner yep. back, clearing. Brilliant. He covers a lot of ground. He does. Sailing ball, St Mary's. St Mary's have got a few calls now, and, you know, it's helping them. A wee bit of momentum. That's it. Cross and Pison need to get yeah, a grip on the game again. They've went to sleep for the past five, ten minutes here. Well, even this in tow and trainer, I think. Oh, there's Dan yeah. McGill down. Looks like a bad enough injury, but it looks a bit. We have an injury here in the uh, square, yep. It's. He's holding his knee or his hamstring. He's holding his knee or a hamstring or something like that there, so. Just by the look of that there, it doesn't seem to be anything. There was nothing untoward about it. I don't think there was, you know, there's nobody claiming that there was anybody hit or anything like that there. I just think the player went down and. Well, he's back up this on his feet again. This would be a big blow for St. Mary's. He's heading towards the sideline. Well, it looks like he's getting a uh, blood sub, the referee, I think, is signalling for. Not sure. Is it a temporary substitution here? It's just off picture here. That's his, his guy and we're just looking at the replay there. That was the brilliant save from TT Smith. But uh, live on the play here, we're just looking at that goal chance again. It played in by own trainer, and Gary McElhatton got it up all right. It was tight enough angle, but it's still a brilliant save. Uh, and he got and here we go. It's we've Ronan. Got, it, we've got, got Ronan crossing on. Ronan crossing. Ronan crossing. Play the county uh, manors last year. Very, very tenacious. We heard her play for some goal seniors as well. So, right. very experienced sub to be bringing on. But again, Don McGill, joint captain of the team, losing them at this stage again. A big blow. I think it's only a temporary substitution now, whether, but he, he doesn't, doesn't look, look He doesn't look as if he's going to go back on again. We'll see how it goes in a minute or two. So Shamey McCauley on the Shemis ball McCauley again. turns, goes on his left. We touch, plays it up in the corner. Yeah. And he got the runner in the corner. Yeah, Ryan McMullen's well. on it. Cross field. And oh well taken. Yes, that's well Joe McToll. Joe McToll turns. And it's all the way. Yep. I think that's Joe's sec second or third yeah, point. Joe's, Joe's yeah, Joe's second point. Very, very simple. Uh, simple catch, turn, pop yeah. over the ball. Yeah. The half forwards have all scored for uh, Cross and Passion. That's Joe's second. One for Fergal McKiernan earlier on. And Mickey Boyle, of course, with, with the free. Bit of a rock. Yep. And Kiel no Duffin blocked Turned down. Back into it and blocked Shamiri down. Said, like. yep. So it looks like just leg for leg for uh, Ronan Cross and straight in the full forward for Donham. So not much of a change, yep. although I do notice now Cross and Pison have pulled back into Oak McGarry on the the run. In other words, they've changed. They've changed their strategy at the back. It looks like it. I think though it's uh, Ronan Laverty is picking up uh, crossing. Oh, short one. Do it the will. Has That's a shot. Not bad. No, it's gone wide. It's tail wide. Oh, just tail wide. Good idea. It was a good idea. Maybe the first touch let him down, but he did break through the cover. Crossing pass won't be happy with that. The management. No. I mean, they're switching off at times like that. So Mary's have been doing it as well at times too. So again, it maybe goes back to that nerves. Then on a final. So deal to underneath it again. And I got Fergal McKernan. Yeah. Good depth, Ruben McLean. Down into the corner. Still not back. And Christy McGarry. Christy McGarry. Well he plays it out for a too sailing. fancy. Too fancy. He's been catching these well, these sailing yeah. balls, Kyle McKernan. So be hoping for a delivery. Might put the scud on him there, obviously. It's Sean Brogan Sean fumbling Brogan. about. Dale that plays it back to Kiln and drives it into the and forward. And will be into the corner, yep. Yeah. Darren Murphy's under this one you. again. Uh, oh, it was a great tackle. Great tackle. That's John McAllister. Uh, no, it's not John McAllister who's picked it up there. That's uh, number seven. That's uh, Conleth McKinley. Conleth McKinley. Get that in the clearance. Owen McGrath. Yeah. Two of Mary's men around him, so they should win this one. And they have. Yeah, Cale McKernan again. Nice wee pop pass, and he gets his free for the shoulder off yep. the ball. Cale McKernan's been very strong, you have to say. Mapping up a lot of 
ball coming out of the defence. Sorry, that was Daniel Murray that time. My mistake. Daniel Murray. Love you, Come on. Yeah. He would have played a good bit of senior this year, would he, Daniel? Um, for love, you're a guy. They yeah. were struggling for senior hurling yeah. this year, to be honest. But um, played with the county, a very, very strong, almost hurler. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Keelan McKernan again, Sarsfield man. It's a very, very high, but it's gone wide. Yeah, it's gone well wide. So that's a wee bit disappointing now. St Mary's need to get really nail these here scores at the moment whenever they're getting their chances because they're in the they're in the sentence possibly in the last 10 minutes whereas Ballycastle maybe had 5-7 minutes in the before that yeah you got to make them count yeah. ok and the Oak did he didn't, didn't oh he just got the spell he's still going to make it oh Shamie McCauley came on there lovely great take great wee hand pass off this well edge Ruben McLean. McLean. Ruben McLean plays the ball in nicely. And well mopped up, but deal to Wilson. Good man. That's well done. But Cale no Duffin on it again. Three. Didn't get the first touch. Uh -huh. Ruben McLean, great dip. Right. Nice wee pass in the middle again. We pop pass. And it's Joe McToll again. again. To Mary's a cut and on. They're closing crowded. down. If you hold the ball, you'll not get. You'll get closed down very very quickly. That's Christie. It's getting hot, it's getting yep. hot and happy now. There is very, very little room. As, as Samiri seem to be closing it down very, very tight um, there, if you have any time on the ball at all. And the same at the other side. It's when you break out of the rocks that you know, there's, the space is there, if you can get into the, that space. They seem to be getting joy both teams when they're using the wee pass off the shoulder. Yeah. Mickey Boyle again. We're going for the sideline. Cross field one. Oh. Just over. He was aiming. Just didn't get the space. Owen Mays on it now. Feeds it Owen out. Owen Mays come out a couple of times but that one was just pu pushed too far. Kale McCarran's all over him. It's cross field again. Well done, Delta. So Kale no Duffin, great dip. Now he's on his back. I must say that uh, Delta has recovered well from that early mistake, and that well, looks a good point. Well, Duffin seems to have learned from his first way. Didn't bring it into an acute angle, shot it in early. But TT Smith's done make, well there. Make no. That was still a good move from St Mary's, you know. The Yes, they're funny. And the Dulta Wilson has come out two, three, four times since he made the, that mistake, and it's a good sign for a young fella that actually, you know, he ha it hasn't put him off. No, Ma he's prob probably the youngest player in the pitch. Kill McKernan again, crossfield ball, he's taken down he by Michael Boyle. Let's see when they hit the corner forward. We're looking for Ram McMullen again. He Ryan drops McMullen. it, and it's out for Samiri Sailing ball. Mm. That's a wee bit disappointing because that ball was played well for him and he got the hand up but just bounced off him. So one trainer on the ball again. Oh, he fumbled it. Oh, well done, Michael O'Boy. Cleared straight Here's into the full forward Here's line. Here's Warren McGrath under it. Now you've got Ram McMullen. He shoots from an acute angle. Unfortunately for him, Gone it just goes way. This one's contested just out in front of us here. And Ooh, under pressure, come back. He's looking for Kale McKern again. And he's got, he's got the advantage anyway. Yep. Feeds it on to Gary McElhatton and he gets his advantage. He spilled the ball. Yep. Very wonder, hard for Cross and Poison to get through him. I uh, wonder does he actually see the referee signaling his advantage whenever you're you know, in that intense situation that the, you know, you're trying to break free and you're trying to get something. I don't think he even notices that. He's handed the longer ones over to Dara Murphy. Dara Murphy this time. Dara's got a bit of experience on the freeze as well, so yeah. it's not a. That's the third free taker now. Yeah, but Dara's been hitting freeze for Ross and for for the county for years now, so he'll not be, he'll not phase him. 
27 minutes, we're coming up towards half time. And it is, has been a low scoring game. It's, a sco it's, it's been a game of misses as well. They've been striking from distance and not making it. I don't know if this is going to reach. It's not going to reach. Short, it's strapping, and it's fumble. Oh, and the Oak McGarry, I think it is. Well done. He fumbled it, but he recovered himself well. Plays it right to Ruben McLean. McLean. Ruben McLean. Jimmy McCauley with a clearance up into the forward yeah. lane. And here we go, Orrin McGrath and Don Murray going to battle it out. Breaking ball comes out and gets Owen Trainer. McLean goes straight to Michael Boyle. And that's and Keel McCarran again on the, the break. So Keel no tough no again. He's going to be looking to get this into his hand and get going. That was well. Connor McLean, well yeah. done. End of McGarry with a lovely wee pop pass off. And back to him. That's a nice play. Is there going to be a break here just before half That looked like a push in the back. He got away with it. So Mary's again smart at feeding the ball out, not yep. panicking, throwing it up to be hooked or blocked, getting the there space and getting the There's a, a good contrast moment. in how they're working it out of defence. Uh, Ballycastle seem to favour the long ball into the full forward line, while um, St Mary's are trying to play the half forwards and trying to look at... Look at two minutes out of time here we're talking about just three minutes until the blow now plenty of time for something to happen here one may just gets the hurry game, game changer to happen no it's gas killing mckernan again is it well uh, taken out well done is that too far? Running across and trying to keep it in, and he does. he does. And if he gets around this man, I tell you, Ronan can do damage. He's trying the first man, second man comes to meet him. Oh, great tackle. Good tackle. Great Very tackle. Good tackle. Very He's good just got tackle. a stick in, Ronan Laverty at the right time. Now TT. TT. TT's. Handy enough her out the field as well, so he's no worry when he gets out that far. And again, St Mary's using that smart pass in the free man. Owen Trainer? Owen Trainer, yeah, again. Great and catch. And again, it's taken from. That's John McAllister, yeah. I think. Mm. But Darth Delaney with a nice wee ball back. Gary Michael Hutton wins it here. He's at an acute angle. He's I think that's a free uh, If the referee saw what he actually did there, that there could be you know, there's a booking offence there. Maybe yeah. worse. But uh, It looks like he got away with it. He's actually speaking to the or felt the shame. Player was actually holding him. Looking now at Darren Murphy. Yeah. Coming out to take this here. Uh, it's well within his range. Three to five points. I think he's just hoping to get a good connection with yep. this one. The crowd is going quiet again. And he's connected. That's over the bar. That's, over the bar. That's all the way. Good strike, well Darren. So St Mary's move ahead until 1 4 to 0 5 lead. And that's how it's going to be at half time. But it's a game that hasn't really taken off at all. It's, is it nerves? Is it um, the tightness of the pitch? Is it, you know? I, I would put it down to one, the age of the players probably, and two, the occasion. I'd say in the second half, it's, it's no holds barred in the second half. Once we come out here, I would expect the two teams to open up a wee bit more. But. Um, so Mary's getting on half time, two points up will be the happier, but in reality two points is nothing. Yeah. On a on a tight pitch though, um each team playing a, a sweeper, um we're we're looking at really uh, uh you know, it's very, very hard to break that system down and get enough openings. But there have been openings, there have been chances. hundred percent both teams have had goal chances, goalkeeper did well. Um for T T Smith made a couple of good resales. Um so Mary's got lucky a few times when Cross and Pyson were through and didn't didn't punish them yep. so yeah it's, it's, it's all in the balance for the second half and the penalty goal uh, penalty it was a penalty yeah penalty and it was well struck um, in the corner so uh, that, that seems to be a difference between the two teams uh, there, w there was another as of the of the two teams uh, 
Samiris had another goal chance as well, probably the only goal chance of the first half. If you, you know, um, Ronan Cross and come. Uh, r- uh, the one that uh, Ronan, oh well, Ronan Crossan came in too with the one, but there was an earlier one there from uh, was it Gary McElhatton? Yes, came right that's through, right, and yeah. uh, the goalkeeper saved to tip it off the crossbar. So, you know, there were a couple of more goal chances coming up for uh, St Mary's and it wasn't taken. So, uh, we're going to now uh, just have a wee word with a couple of pl- uh, people at half time here, and we're going to uh, um, speak, I think, of. At the start, we'll take a um, have we word of Una Murta. Or yeah, we'll just have a wee word with a quick word with the principals of the two schools. Right, we'll just that, and we'll have a word with Siobhan Kelly here, who is the principal of Samiri CBS, and just. Waiting until she's wired up here now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Now, Siobhan, um, this is probably your first uh, chance to experience a McGee and Cup final as principal. It certainly is, and it's a very exciting evening. We're absolutely yeah. delighted to be here. The squad have worked very, very hard, but there's stiff competition. Yeah. You know, both two good, very good teams, you know, so we're Yeah, I think, I think both teams are, we're saying on commentary here that they both seem to be a bit nervous because it's been a couple of years since they've been in finals. They, they have, and uh, it's great that we're here again, you know, and uh, Ballycastle are a great team, you know, so yeah. we're, we're delighted to be playing them, you know, so uh, this is the future we're looking at, you know, this is uh, hopefully a load of county players in the future. Yeah, so and uh, St uh, Mary's have, of course, a great record in the, in the McGeehan Cup. Uh, but it has been com- become a much tougher competition of late now. So to win it means a desperate lot more than it maybe did when there was, you know, they were top guns. And well, that's it. And there's been lots of excitement in school this week. You can imagine the lane up and down to St Mary's is is the c- school colours and in, in anticipation of tonight. So look, we hope we hope for the best. But there's stiff competition out there. So as long as the boys have a good night and enjoy it, we're delighted. Okay, and uh, move across to Paul McLean. Pa- Paul McLean is the principal of uh, Cross and Passion. And would Thanks this Seamus. be your first? Uh, this is my first experience, Seamus, of, of the McGee and Cup. It is now. Joe Cassidy, when I was first appointed, told me great things about the hurling, and I have to say, I've, I've given a bit of gentle ribbon about how successful the girls have been over the last number of years. But but it has just been gentle because I've seen the work and the dedication that that the, the te- senior teams have put in, all the teams have put in over the years. And and you know, tonight's a big culmination. You can see the turnout. You know, everybody has been treated to something special yeah. so far tonight and we're very hopeful for a good second half as well. well it was, it's been very, very tight and it hasn't really opened up and got the crowd excited. Oh, well, the first five minutes, Seamus, I have to say, it was, it was, there was no quarter being given. Everybody was yeah. going full on gung-ho now. I think maybe a wee bit of nerves out there. You can see a few sloppy scores and a few sloppy you know, efforts. Now, I have to say, we've been lucky. There's been a few goal-mouth scrambles. Big Ogie at the back and Tiernan Smith have done a good job keeping the ball out and we're just hopeful that things settle a wee bit in the second half. And a couple of strong players in the Samiri side, I have to say. A couple of very talented boys. Number 13, Keelan Duffins making some a hell of a, an engine on them down that left side. So we can tune into that and sort of settle the nerves. And we've got some big scores out there, Seamus. You know, we're not, we haven't lost heart here. No, I wouldn't say that there's any heart lost or anything like that there. But I'm saying it's low scoring for a hurling match. It is, stage. it is. Well, it's early days. The conditions are fairly good. A wee bit damp, but the conditions are good. And I'm hopeful that the second half, the boys will all come out both sides and give a good account of themselves. And that's all we want to see, Seamus. Yeah, a, good, a good game. There's a good turnout from your school down here. Brilliant tonight. turnout. Brilliant turnout. And there always is. You know, there's a great support, as you know. The school's well known for a lot of things, but but we're, our sport and fabric is, is is a part of who we are, and, and we're hopeful that tonight that shines through. And, and you know, win, lose, or draw, we're very proud to be here, very proud to see the boys back on the biggest stage, and we're hopeful that we can see a good second half. Any of them been in the, uh, you said the show there before Halloween or around Halloween? Uh, any of the boys involved in it? No, I'd like to see a few boys more involved. In <laughs> I have to say, some of our younger hurlers went to see the show, and I think they were they were blown away, and they said, oh, "I'd love to be in the show." But these boys were focused and dedicated on this job, so they were, and, and say they couldn't be sidetracked by sister act. Um, a, few, a few went to see it, I'm sure, but who knows why? Maybe some of the girls on stage were attracting their eye, but <laughs> hopefully they're focused on, on what's important here, Seamus, and that's yeah. what they're going to be looking forward to. And tonight. of course, in St Mary's, there's a lot more attractions rather than just uh, hurling. There's well, there's a lot of sport, as yeah. you know, um, and we've we've won a lot of things over the years and participated in a lot of things. So, but you know, hurling is one of the top things, and we're delighted to be back at the top of our game again and hoping for hoping for a few years of good sport as yeah. well. You know, so we're delighted. Um, 
I suppose you're aware that this year is a lot later than it would be in other years. Uh, has that affected the preparations in any, any way, uh, you know, for, for the team management? Well, I have to say, Seamus, I think it, it's a positive um, because we've seen a few teams, you know, I know a lot of Lavi boys were involved in St. Pat's Mahara, a lot of our Lock Eel boys were involved at a very late stage as well. So if we'd had the competition a wee bit earlier as it had been traditionally, we might have been in a bit of bother. So this has given us certainly an extra few weeks preparation, but the boys were out over half term, the boys have been out over weekends. I think, if anything, it's going to give them an opportunity to, to really fully express themselves. And but uh, by the same token, uh, when you're training at this time of the year, you're actually training under lights it's, and it's much colder it's weather, etc. So it's, it's, it's more different. It's, mo it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can see they're fit young men. You know, they've, they've looked after their nutrition, mm -hmm. they've looked after their health, and, and you know, it's it's paying dividends tonight. You know, they're strong boys. You know, so we're hoping for a good second half. We are indeed. It comes back to that bit of commitment as well. Seamus, we've had our boys out on Sunday mornings the last few weeks and staff out. You know, maybe giving up t family time and things as well. But they're making a big commitment, and that it's worth it, as you can see yourself. That's good. I want to talk to another couple of people here but I'm not going to ask you who's going to win because I know rightly you're going to say oh, we're hoping for a good second half I think <laughs> that's about the height of it so we are diplomatic thank you very much Paul Seamus, thanks thank a lot thank you uh, we're just going to have an um, just have a word maybe with uh, Una Murda from the Danske Bank if, yep yeah? Aye, too yep just okay it's just a half time and I can see as usual the pitch is covered and uh, young people, you're not going to see what's going to happen up here or who we're talking to, but Una Murta is uh, is here on behalf of the sponsor of Danske Bank. But we don't really call them sponsors, we call it a partnership, really. Absolutely, Seamus, it's a partnership. We are so, so sorry, I asked that right. there again. All right. uh, we don't call it a sponsorship uh, in, the, in the colleges here, we call it a, really a partnership. Absolutely, uh, Seamus, it is a partnership. It's a partnership we're very proud of. And these young men out here tonight, such an exciting game. They are a credit to their families, to the schools, to the teachers, to everybody who's got the match fit here tonight. It's incredible. And also the local community who are out in force from uh, Ballycastle and Belfast here to support them. And community is a big thing with Danske Bank. Oh, absolutely. Community is the heart of everything we do. Our staff, our customers, everybody is behind these competitions and we're so proud to be in partnership yeah. with the Ulster schools and of course you've, uh, you're also involved with second level schools in other sports as well yes yes we have the women's premiership on tonight a colleague of mine is away to that the Danske Bank premiership the ladies football so we do the Ulster schools so it's all about the youth and supporting the youth throughout Northern Ireland yeah and we very much appreciate that as well thank you very much now uh, and also joining us here is Ear Arch uh, coming out last Gail Porrick Duffy uh, as a former school principal of course Porrick you would be um, used enough to what's involved with the McCurry Cup is this your first time in the McGeehan Cup final? Well, yeah I'm, I'm a f football man I'm afraid but, uh, <laughs> yeah. so this is a new experience for me I'm very very impressed I mean it's, it's a brilliant even fantastic crowd a great atmosphere, two good teams, so really big game. And and you're looking forward to a good second half, I presume? I think it's, it's, it's wide open. I mean, it's, it's there. Yeah. The Mary's have come back in the second quarter very, very strongly. So it's been a really good game, very competitive. So looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, and um, from your involvement with St. McCartans, etc., yeah. you can understand what it is to work with smaller schools and try and bring them to that level. Well, that's huge. I mean, I mean the, the importance of... of of the games and Gaelic games in, in, in our schools is, is you can't overemphasize. I mean, I'm, I'm chairman of the board of management at McCartans now, and I see the time, the amount of time is put into it by the teachers in the school. How important it is for the kids to represent the school. And as I was saying to Una earlier, there's, there's no problems that can compare with Ulster in terms of the, the quality of the schools' competitions and the breadth of participation. It's 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 phenomenal. Yeah, it's uh, only in the last, I suppose, last seven eight years that we've really gone for the presentation of the McGee and Cup on, on something of a par with the uh, McCurry Cup and has really lifted the uh, oh, hurling in the schools. It's been so impressive tonight I mean, in terms of the attendance, in terms of the quality of hurling and how the whole event has been organised as well, well up to the high standards of Ulster schools. Yeah and uh, you'll be used till, uh, Una you'll be used till going to matches at night yes. in, in from the different uh, partnerships that you have with different sports. Uh, there's a great atmosphere under lights. Oh, absolutely. It's such it's such a close game. It's so exciting. The whole atmosphere here is fantastic. And it's great to see the supporters out, family, friends, schools, communities. I'd also like, Seamus, like to take the opportunity to pay credit to the committee and the volunteers of the Ulster Schools because this is a volunteer organisation and the competitions that they run are superb. They're so professional, first class, and none of this could happen without the volunteers and the committee. 
Right, we know we, we know that there, and we appreciate all that. Um, the um, moving on to all Ireland, all Ireland level, etc. Um, there's um, a big gap though to be made up in the hurling park. There is, but in fairness, it's not just at colleges level. That, that's across the board, and I suppose. The key there is to, is to broaden the participation, the high-level participation beyond Antrim. We're still very dependent on, on Antrim clubs and Antrim you know, county, and I suppose that's that's always the challenge. But look, there's, there's a lot of good work being done yeah. in, in Derry and down and so on. But it, it, look, it, it will always be a challenge at all Ireland level. But I think for the for the schools here, winning this competition is that this, this is the blue ribbon event, and that in itself is, a, is something well worth aiming for. Yeah, and we in Ulster schools would also be proud of the fact that we're spreading the hurling gospel that, you know, the likes of your own schools and McCartan's is involved in That's it. Right. So we're maybe talking about 36 to 40 schools now that are involved in hurling that, there's, there's, you know, many of them wouldn't have been involved 10, 15 years exactly. ago. Exactly, and there's as much work we've done in the schools as there is in, in many of the clubs and counties. So I think that's been really, really important. And the whole structure now of being able to play the game at different levels, levels suited to your ability, that's worked out really, really well in both football and hurling. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much for both of you. Thank, Thank you, Seamus. Go to Mike. Go to Mike. All right, we're just in time because uh, Cross and Passion have just gone out for the second half here now. And as our guests there all said, there it's uh, you know it's, it's nicely set up here. We're talking about uh, a two-point game at half time here. And uh, I just want to get uh, Damien involved here as well because Damien, you're involved in the another initiative that's happening in Antrim at the moment, which is the Gale Fast Initiative. Uh, could you maybe talk us through a wee bit of what's uh, going on, what you're actually doing? You're one of the GPOs. Explain to me what a GPO is. Well, basically, it's a games promotion officer. So there's 11 of us in in, in Gale Fast. Gale Fast, basically, for people who don't know, it's a it's an innovative innovative exciting new approach to games development in Antrim GAA um, you know we're all all county all communities and all codes and that's our our war cry so we're basically looking to develop right the way up from primary school secondary school development squads and, uh, and the local clubs as well so it's going well yeah and you as involved in what is actually the work of a GPO are you in, are you in the schools are you in primary schools are you in yeah. secondary schools well we're geographically located so I'm located in the Falls hub of Belfast so I have six local primary schools and I work with three um, secondary schools as well so we're pretty busy during the week and then at the weekends it's taken up with uh, go games and development squads and um, yeah I'm just noticing that a substitute out there, and we have Kiel no Duffins. Kiel no Duffins back. going very fast and strikes. Great save by TT and hit wide by Dara Murphy. Wide, it's gone wide. Again, the pace of Kiel no Duffin, and then he got that ball. But we have a substitute on the Cross and Passion team, and I think it's number eight that has gone out. And the substitution in, uh, from Samiris is also permanent, so we'll take a look at that there again. But number uh, eight, Seamus McCauley. Seamus McCauley, I think. Uh, can you see no, Seamus McCauley? No, I can't. He's in the middle of the field. That's Seamus, sir. Seamus is Sean Brogan? Not sure, but because uh, number 19, uh, Dylan Devlin went in as a substitution for Ballycastle at the middle uh, at midfield for the throw-in, and the two midfielders were Seamus and Sean. Well, Dylan Devlin's great. We heard it from Mark Gale. Play for the county, too. He'll do a bit of damage if you give him the room. We'll see how he gets on here. So Daniel Murray on the ball Daniel now. Murray. Good dip. Good, strong fella. And great clearance down the line. I'm not sure where that's gone, and I don't think the linesman is. Mm. Well, take a wee look. Can you see Sean Brogan out there? Nope. I think well, he looks like it's Sean Madoff. I think he went in for Sean Brogan then, so. Dylan Devlin for Sean Brogan at half time. And uh, the other substitution in the first half was for St Mary's. It looked to be an injury to Dana McKeel and Ronan Cross. And that's now a, f a permanent f a substitution. That was a temporary substitution before half time, but it's now a permanent one. I think the break of the ball has got there, there, and we and we have a couple of very uh, animated. Uh, Team mentors down there, <laughs> Joe Casty and Woody McKinley. Woody McKinley. We're not happy very, with something. Very, very happy with something that's going on there. Uh, Let's get Owen Trainer on it now for St Mary's. 
Turn around, looking for that spare man again. There's nobody he's free, but he's won us free. That was stupid. Diving in, was. diving in because he wasn't really going anywhere. They no. had him boxed in there, so yeah, it was silly for a crossing pace and to give away the free. And he hadn't even the option of a hand pass back either because he's run, he'd already taken the tap on the stick. Or Darren Murphy again. Looks like they've done away with the sweepers at this stage anyway. Dara Murphy's laying it up here. Yeah. Going through his routine. Can I sweep well? Good. And it's over That's the all away. Dara Murphy. And it's a three point game all of a sudden. It's a good start to the second half for St Mary's. Cross and Pison struggling to get a foothold here. It's a great ball. Fergal McKeon under it, but Keon McKernan just gets there, knocks it across often. I don't think that's scoring up on the board there. Going right into the corner. It's gone up now. The scoreboard's just changed there now, although the caption on the television screen here hasn't. So there's a lot of space in the full forward lane for Cushion or for Valley Castle. Uh, Oren McGrath is off, and uh, number 21, Shea McDonald has come in. And Shea McDonald uh, did very well in the under 16 All County final this year, played for, play for the County Miners too, so he's very, very fast. Um, to do a bit of damage again, but Don yeah. Murray will know him, know him inside out from playing the guy with the county, so. A good cut there, but wide, it just went wide. wide. Uh, yeah, I'm um, surprised to see Or McGrath taking off because Or McGrath has been playing well in this competition. Maybe tonight he just didn't get involved in the game as much. Mm -hmm. They're going to try something else, cross and passion, but I'm not sure what's happening here. But uh, the referee's not happy with something. It's John McAllister, he's coming over to speak to. He spoke to John McAllister, I think, in the first half, too, over a foul. John's still a full back end old at centre half. Not sure what. It's just very, very nervous. Well, Christy McGarry. Christy McGarry wins his free. You'd expect this one to go over. Michael O'Boyle. Well, there's a wee bit of. He'll have the distance, he'll have the distance. A few boys slapping at each other there, you know, shoving at each other, trying to put Mickey O'Boyle off as he goes over to it. I guess Connor McHugh gone out with a water bottle to him. Mickey O'Boyle. Dipping. Connects with really, really well. Uh, with. No. Wade. It's gone wide. We're talking about chances been missed here. Cross and passion could have really been doing yep. that just to settle them down in the second half. Because they really haven't been settling this game at all. And yet they're only three points out, so there's not a there's not a big gap to cover. It's just that they can get going. Well, that was very, very well taken. We picked it off the deck. So it's better referee. It's free in the cross and passion again. More uh, acute angle, but again within the range of Michael O'Boyle if he does get the accuracy. I thought that Darren Delaney got down on that there very well. Obviously picked it off the ground. Michael O'Boyle again. He cut the tension of my knife. Going very mm. quiet in the crowd here. Yeah. I would say there's... You know, a big crowd from Bally Castle here waiting to get involved in the game, and they're not—they're not getting involved in the game because there's not not enough happening. The first five minutes, as Paul McLean, the principal, said, they were going well. Since then, it hasn't really happened. Another great He's strike. Got that. that would have carried more. He's got meters. that one. Well done, Michael Boyd. He's fainting his reins now. Good puck out by Ed Mullen. Three and a half forward, a wee flick on. 
picked up the Shane McCauley read yep. well. Delivered in there. Then is that Shane McDonald again? Yep. No. no if he gets round on, turned him, could be he's in turned trouble him, here. He's turned him. So he's got it in his hand again, stood up. Um, a great strike. Oh, a great yeah, point by Shane McDonald. It's a good impact. He's only in. Impact point straight away. Shane McDonald's only joined the school. He played in the uh, Forrester's Cup final last year for St Killian's, actually against Cross and Passion. He was a losing side that year, that day. Can we see a push from Ballycastle now? It's just a one point Dulta. game. Dolta Wilson yeah. out again. Oh, he does well. And clears, he's been doing well since he made that mistake, as you mentioned. And Rory Murray now plays a ball on end under Gary Michael Hatton. Knocked down. Knocked down and Mickey, Mickey Boyle seems to be playing just behind the midfield there. Yeah. Look at that first strike. He's looking at getting it into the danger one again here. And Don Murray's just missed that one. Shane McDonald's through. It looks like, oh, it was a great save by Ed, but it's been followed up and finished. And that's Christy McGarry. First time, whip on the ground. And it goes, Christy sorry, Ryan McMullen. Ryan McMullen, first time. But the work was done with the two Glen Arif players. Shane McDonald in first. And, uh, and that tactic of the long ball from, that we yeah, mentioned earlier ball. has finally yeah, paid yeah, off. Yeah. yeah. Ball from Mickey O'Boyle from his own half back line straight right. into the full. We're forward. looking at it here again there and a fine strike right into the corner. There's no chance of a defender getting back there once Shane McDonald was blocked down. There was no chance of a defender getting back to it again. I think that might be the spark of this game needed. Now the rain's coming down. Yep. I hate to, I hate to we use the cliche, but it, it's, it's maybe just whoever wants it most at this stage, it's going to yep. be a green out game. And you can hear the you can hear the crowd just getting more wee bit more lifted now. I think there's a we're looking here at the replay of it again as Shane McDonald comes in again, went to the goalie got a Aidan Mullen got a very, very good touch on it there, but following through um following through and Ryan McMullen was the one that got onto the ball. It broke again and, and Endo McGarry picks it up lovely. It's a long ball again, but it's too one. far. It's too far. Ooh. Oh, there's a bit of a mess. No, oh, they did well. Delta Wilson feeds Very it cool out. Very cool there. Very cool. <laughs> Gary McElhatton picks it up. Yep. Lovely steal. Gary Great block. Good block. Fantastic block. Mm. Nah, I don't know. Oh, well, well taken through. Well taken through. And Old McGarry and feeds it off well. Gary yeah, McMullen again. Two locks heel, boys. Try to check and turn round, and he's got a he's got a striking chance, but it's mm. not going to make it. Daniel Churchill just did enough to put him off. Her. Yep. Didn't give him a run on goal. But Ender all the associate more been a full full back tonight. He's in the centre half back, but he's not a centre half back that sits in his position. No. He had burst through a number of occasions there and caused problems. He loves to drive forward when he gets a chance. It's hard to stop him when he's in full throat. McGee and St Mary's, Dara Murphy, uh, looked hell. like he'd been pulled yeah, and he yeah. got his free. Was he, be was he being pulled or was he pulling as well? No, I don't know, <laughs> it looked like he was getting... Maybe that's my St Mary's bass again, but it looked like he was being pulled. Sorry. So Andy McLean coming off for Finn Mervyn. Andrew McLean has gone off then and he's replaced by uh, Finn Mervyn, number 20. We're now 41 minutes in. Forty-one minutes in and Dara Murphy, I'll say this is important enough, uh, free for him to nail for you know, they've just lost a wee bit of momentum there to, uh, for a moment there. He strikes it. It looks to be good. Yeah, it is good. Keep them in touch and distance. Good. Yep. We're back to a one-point game then. This time, Cross and Passion's just ahead. Oh, great catch. Ah, great take Boyle. by Michael Boyle. Runs and away. he has a pace to get away. Plays it in. Ball First time, Tom Murray's out in front. Does well to knock it out. Oh, that's Daniel Churchill. 
Uh, well, well done, Shimon very, McCauley very well again. Shimon McCauley. Free for Mickey Boyle now. He's missed a few, but he also was involved. He took that free earlier himself there, and he was involved in the long ball that got the, the goal. He fairly connects it with a sweet spot. Maybe one up the nice, just again, as accuracy. Great strike. Striking it again. Looks like it's gone over. Yes, umpire's happy enough. A few minutes ago we were talking about, you know, just knocking a couple of balls wide. He picks himself up, scores the next two, involved with the goal. Spilt by Christy McGarry there, and one by Keel No Duffin, played across into Gary McElhatton, picks it up well after the second touch. It's dropping short. He's running past a couple of players. I'm running across and trying to get the block down, but well to yep. by Ruben, I think. Fergal McKinnon on the ball now. Plays it across. Well taken out. And Dilda Wilson again. Avoids and getting he's hooked. gone past midfield. And plays it across and lovely. We pause. Just didn't make it, but right idea. Gary Michael Hatton get this. Gary McElhatton success. seems to be slow on the ball just at the moment. You know, he's not he's just not doing things quick enough. No, he, he, you're not getting away with it with these defenders in a game like this. We're noticing mm. that we share there, there's players slipping and sliding. It's gonna have an impact as well. No, with it with two points in it, you know, it could be down to not that you would want it, but an individual mistake or a slip or a slay. Right so into the corner, just over hit it. Owen May out in front, but uh, Ram McMullen seems to have held it up. Owen May comes out with the lead. Good delivery up a favour. Shimmy McCauley there again. Yep. Reading it. Great reading of the game. Didn't manage to win it. Still on the breaking ball. But it has suited him in the sense that he's running onto every ball from just yep. behind midfield. The Duffin's just looking to get that ball in his hand again. He hasn't been on the ball as much in the second half as he was in the first. Darren Murphy again on the ball. It's all tight. Oh, there, here oh, he goes Duffin. Now. Okay, Duffin's on his back. He's an easy point if he wants it, but he's carrying it on in. Oh, it's a crossbar. Oh, it's a crossbar again. Great That's effort. two off the crossbar. Still in play on the far side. I don't think a goalie got a chance. Uh, got a touch on that. No. Taking a shot from there. Looks just like it's going hope. wide. It's gone wide. So there's a chance wasted there with some Maybe get a wee look at that and again. There he goes in again. And just takes strikes. First it. time straight oh, off a crossbar. Oh, straight off a crossbar. Just the underside of the crossbar and to safety. Small margin, Seamus. Small margin, small margin. He this, you know, he's played well in there. I think it was a substitution for Mervyn that yeah. played him in. Again, those puck outs have been directed to Michael Boyle. Did you notice that? Yeah. <coughs> well, he's, him and Shumi McCauley seem to be the main man. Yeah. Main man on the crossing patient side today. Kaelin McKernan. Plays it down the lane. He's looking for Kaelin O'Duffin again. He's got him. He's found him. He's boxed now in the corner. Can he do something with this? He's going for a shot. But it's that's a score. That's a brilliant half. score. That brilliant is a score. brilliant score. Right from the sideline. Bad angle. I thought it was madness. Go for a shot like that there. But perf perfect hit. And just inside the post. Kaelin O'Duffin. And McKernan's out in front again. Great yeah. catch, centre half back. I think they've Very caught positive. on. I think they've caught on that they've got to do something about uh, Michael Boyle from target. Dara Murphy plays a lovely wee ball back to Gary Michael Hutton. Held up back to Dara. Darum. He's at an acute angle. Plays it's, it's going, going short, it's but going it's dropping in. Oh, keeper makes a safety tee. He's coming out with, yeah. and looks like he may have been fouled. Uh, and they get the free. Yeah, he's been pulled back. Silly. Pulled back. Back. So Mary, some probably a few chances there that they'll be you know you know things go don't go to plan you know between now and the end they'll be looking back and they'll say that maybe at a period in the game when they could have done better McCurran wins it again we're in the last quarter now oh, it's a 
Looks like he's getting a yellow card by the referee. He's posturing towards him at the minute. Yep. That's uh, Ryan McMullen. Kill McCarn straight up. No think, part of him. I think Ryan has been a wee bit frustrated, you know, the way things have gone at times. I know that he's got in, he's got his goal, but, you know, he hasn't had the impact that he's had in other matches. Mm. It's the life of a corner forward sometimes, James. You know yourself, you go through the game for yeah. 50 minutes with a, with a, a ball and then bang. It's like a bus, three of them come along at the one time. McKernan looks like he's going for one out to the wing. Quick one. Running crossing. Is he going to move? Far? He's got the space to take a strike, but he takes him on on. He's by him. Crossing. Oh, he's took. Free in. Nope. The referee gave it out for three times in the hand. Right. I didn't think it was three times in the hand. I didn't. I thought he was giving him an advantage there. I thought he was you know, the stick had been slapped right him. Anyway, free out for Crossing Passion. We're now uh, coming up towards 12 minutes to go. Uh, point in it. Is anybody's game yet? And Doug lines it up, drives it down the lane. And that's still out again, is it? No, it's uh, Connor Boyd. Connor Boyd. Plays it up into the corner. And he's clear. You're not going for a shot from there, surely. And it's oh my the goodness, that's two in a row. Yeah. Two points in a row that you've got to say, what are yeah. you shooting from there yeah. for? And bang, two this beautiful time we scores. Over. In the first half, they we weren't going over, now they're going over. I think that was running across in there, I think. Well done. Conlon McKinley just hooked there. Well hooked now. Yeah, that was uh, Rory Murray. Very Rory industrious. Murray. Yeah. He's playing midfield. Now and again for St Mary's, flipping in between half forward. So I actually thought it was Owen Trainer that got that point. I may be wrong, but it may may have been. Far uh, side, my old eyes. Here's Finn Mervin. Rory Murray just misses his step, but he keeps it in front of him. Still got the ball Moving now. He's away past Jimmy yep. McCauley. It's a crucial part of the game now. He's dropped the ball, the ball's on the ground. It looks like a defender's ball. Should be a defender's ball. Yeah. And the and clearance old. is now. He caught him on the side of the head there. Yeah. Looks like he's going to get a yellow card at least. He's going to get some sort of a card anyway. That's Daniel Churchill, is it? Yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. Michael Boyle's down. He looks like he's yeah. sore. He's hurt. Be interesting to see what colour of a card yeah, is because it was it was a stick. It's a yellow. Uh, yellow. It could easily have been red, you know, because he did use the stick. Could have been. I would have said it would have been harsh, though. Yeah, I would have um, harsh, but yeah, I've seen them given. That's one of those. To do that, you know. Are we looking at a uh, substitution here for St Mary's? And that's Rory Murray coming off. Uh, Aaron Carey. Aaron, Aaron Carey. Aaron Carey. We have Aaron Carey coming in now for Rory Murray. And Connor O'Mullen coming in for Joe McToll. Joe McToll went quiet just in the second half. Yeah, good, he, had, good, he had a good, good first, first half. half there. Uh, so Joe McToll is off and coming in is Connor O'Mullen for Crossing Passion. This one's Jimmy McCauley again. Mm -hmm. Maybe a while back having a word with him there. And he's playing it across, looks like. Playing it into the corner. He's looking for Ryan. And again, Connor Boyle. Right down, is it far enough to beat the uh, end oak? Oh, and to Mary's win, they're free. The we push in the back there. That was an easy one, soft one from Cross and Pison. Costly one it could be as well if Darren Murphy puts this over. Cramp. I'm talking cramp over here. Looks like it. And having a drink of water at the same time. Coming in with eight minutes left. This free here could be crucial. Eight minutes left and we're one eight each. Low scoring game, but you know, there's there's nobody dominating it. We're getting wee spells where 
you know, crossing passion, maybe, you know, the first first five, ten minutes crossing passion were good, then you had uh, Samiris coming good, then you had that wee spell in the second half where some crossing passion came good, went two points ahead, but they've been pegged back now. Is anybody's game still? We're looking down here around the uh, goal area, and you must say it as well, like what we're talking we're talking about three crossing passion subs, and three for Samiris, maybe one of them forced with Dan and McHugh, but you know, uh, the management team from both sides are prepared to use the bench. Yeah, well, uh, looking at the lineups, even the, the the subs before the game, you could pick five out of each set who who, who are impact subs are going to come on and make a difference. It looks yeah. like looks like we might have another Samiri sub coming on here, Marcus Toner. Um, looks like he's getting warmed up. So um, again, just as you, as you were saying, management not afraid to make changes. Yeah. And Darren Murphy looks he's gone to he's gone off the pitch so it looks as if it's Caelan McCross in the school Caelan McKernan Caelan McKernan sorry Caelan McKernan is going to take this free and I'm wondering Could is Marcus a, getting ready in well, case looking, Dara looking, can't continue well I'm looking there he's pushing he, he definitely there seems to be a hamstring there anyway we'll go back to play there and that looks like a good score from Caelan McKernan it yes indeed. it is a very good score and that's a lead point to Cullen. and a quick puck out by TT goes to oh the referee pulls him back yeah. Jamie's not too happy about that to Skull uh, Warren and Marijter to Shades and Contasi he's in a knee he's in a hot to Shot Roma G. Falke to Ahan Rudla Himmert and Shaw go foil to oh Miss catches, are they crucial? Can they be punished? These rocks. Can they be punished? Important. Must say at the moment though that. Oh, great tackle, Carol. Owen May, our own trainer. Yep. Again, Emma the Hurley flick. Mickey Boyle, can he get out? Feeds it across. He's got across then to Endo uh, McGarry. Endo, Endo plays it low right across again. We're looking Let's right on run. to Connor Mullen. Connor Mullen, I think. Narn Kerry. Or, sorry, it's, it's oh, Connor Mullen. Oh, great tackle, Owen May. Stop somebody, still going. Connor O'Mullen feeds it on. Fair uh, oh, too long. Over carrying three out. It was a bit harsh, I think. I think it's a bit harsh for the over carrying. Uh, we're looking here at uh, Darren Murphy looking back. over at the sideline here. Is it going to be a substitution? Well, Darren Murphy's nope. still on he's there still and he's hobbling on, about, yeah. but the Samiris don't look like they're ready to make a change. They've got the sub. This is Kaelin again. Kaelin McKernan. Will he play the corner? The referee looks like he's going to speak to someone. Gary Markle Hatton is getting called over. Well, he speaks to him, he nearly has to book him, does he? No. That's obviously the umpires who are wired up today. Yeah, alerting him on a ball, played up, spilled by Mickey O'Boyle, they're uncharacteristically yeah. so. Kill no Duffin has it, Kilden turns, Duffin has a has shot, it over the bar. Over the bar. That's over the bar. Great score by Kill no Duffin. Could be critical at this stage. Coming into the last. Three minutes here. Yep. That's two excellent points that he has scored. That one was and Owen May out in front again. Free up. Owen May wins his free. Yep. Or is it? And no, no, no. It's going back. Sorry. It's going back for a puck out. There was a, an injured player. So. There's another uh, player down for Sibiris over the far wing just where that ball st stopped there. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's... Uh, that looks like a hamstring as well. Down at the back here, we're also looking That's at... That's Connor Boyle Connor down Boyle. at the back, and it looks like a blood sub. He's going to have to come off here by the looks of things. Yeah, he's called for temporary sub. Yep. And that's... Uh, number 21 is Dylan McGee is coming in for him. Dylan McGee is coming in as a blood sub for Connor Boyle. Big lad, Dylan. Yep. Number 21, Dylan McGee. We're talking about four minutes. There has to be a, a few extra minutes added on at the end because there were quite a few substitutions. There were a couple of break, breaks in play for injury for the hamstring over there. To I know there's only a couple of minutes left here, but Conor Boyle has been doing really, really well for St Mary's yeah. and in St. such Mary? an important position, so it uh, could be well, dangerous. Have we here. seen a, ballet castle, a good Ballet Castle attack in the last 10 minutes? No. No, Connor Boyle has come out, Dilto Wilson has come out, a number of them have come out here and totally close it off that space. They seem to be. They've touched the goal. Yeah, since uh, was it Shea McDonald got on the first couple of balls, he yeah. hasn't touched it since, or he hasn't got much service. Well, there's no, no service. You can't score if you're not getting the ball. 
We're going back in for a cook out here. Well, well won again. Oh, Good well won. Rory Murray. Excellent. Rory Murray. Excellent Rory. Still Murray. keeping it in front of him. Yep. Slips onto the wet surface, feeds it off. Uh, uh, Rob there. That was Christy Rob McGarry. Well done. Christy, Christy, Christy McGarry, feeds it off well. The Dylan, Dylan Davlin feeds Dylan it on. Devlin. Into Fergal. McKiernan drops his heart. Ball still there. Oh, uh, well done. That's that was um, one of the substitutes. Yeah, Dylan McGee yeah. come on there. Did really, really well. Uh, just not getting the ball up here. Looked like a bit of a foul there, to be honest with you. And they've got I it. They've given it. Thought that there was a harsh one too, you know, for he did slip around and then, you know, the player dived in. I'm 58 sure. minutes gone, two minutes plus injury. Mickey. Two minutes in it. Two points in it, sorry. And we're looking at Mickey Boyle. He has to go for a point here. And it's a difficult one. If he nails this one, it becomes a really, really tense game in the last few minutes. I think he's gone too close there, um, Delta Wilson. Making a boil, dips, strikes. It curls, but it curls clean over. Well done. Strange way of striking. We're a one point game. One minute to go. Plus, entry. Yeah, Jack McGowan coming in now. Uh, for Conliff McKinley, the last minute, plus injury time. Jack McGowan in match, over to Sean Conliff McKinley. Jack McGowan replaces Conliff McKinley of an Aaron Castle team. Jack Mc McGowan has replaced Conliff McKinley and the Bally Castle team, going into the last minute of actual time here. So, great puck out by St Mary's again, and but it was spilled into it. McGarry has it, he plays it in direct first and time. He right over the top. Is it the goalie's Keepers ball? out, he must enough? win this, he and he does. Won. Well done. Oh, well, free has out. Be, has to be a free out. The ah, player in possession was taken down. It has to be a free out. And he doesn't look in good shape here. It was a kind of like oh, a shoulder into the, the, the chest. Well, I don't mean it was a deliberate charge. No, no, no. It was just, just the, it was the, a bad collision. It was the momentum of the two players. Uh, he did very, very well to win the ball, and the other guy was coming in just a bit of a smash. So we have five extra minutes. Connor Boyle's Five. coming back on now. He's been patched up, so yeah, back in for Dylan McGee. Dylan McGee. Yep. Yeah. And uh, with five extra minutes there, it's a long time. Five minutes if you're trying to hold on to a one-point lead. The keeper looks a wee bit dazed here, but I don't think he's going to have to come off. No, no, no. He's he's oh. he's going about his business all right. He's happy enough. Is that a free then for Caelan McCurnan? Caelan McCurnan, yep. yep. We up. have another substitution coming on for Caelan O'Connor. Yep. Big lot from Bally Castle. Hurled on the Celtic Challenge team this year that won the All Ireland Celtic Challenge for Antrim. So, as did a few of the other players on the panels. Christy McGarry's gone. So, that full forward line, you know, uh, that w we talked about before. Or, uh, you know, before the match started, there's going to be very, very dangerous. Two of them's gone. Ryan McMullen's the only one left. That's the way it and goes. He hasn't, doesn't it? he hasn't had a he hasn't had a fantastic game. I know he scored the goal, but you know his impact on the game hasn't been. Substitution, substitution, there's nothing in this game yet. It's anybody's game. It's uh, we're talking almost four minutes of additional time. Might be a wee bit more now because he might have added on something there for the for the uh, for the collision there involving Aidan Mull. Yeah, and will be looking to get this down the field. And he scuffs it a bit, just lands in front of him. Gary yes. McElhatton wins it well. Plays it across the field. A ball there now. Looks like Delta Wilton. Delta Wilson's up the field. Maybe get a nose lead up this far. Right. Yep. Hook. Did he get a top in? It looked like he was fouled off to the play there, but the referee didn't see it, so the referee or the players continued. St Mary's have won the breaking ball. I don't think Cross and Pison will be too happy with that. It's Michael Boyle on the ball now. Michael Boyle still on the ball. Oh. He's still got the ball. Well won by Caelan McKernan. 
Long clearance coming up. Is this? That was pivotal there. If that had been one and put over the bar, that was us level. Right. Dara Murphy looks like he's shaking off a hamstring it's injury. Going, it's going wide. It's going wide. It looks like it's going wide, and yep. it is. Yeah. That was dangerous, sir. Michael, yep. just a wee fumble. The weather conditions are, are, are really But the way hard. he broke through there. Kirk Pucker giving it the shade. That's uh, Jack McGowan. Jack McGowan. And he wins his free. Michael, is it? Yep, that's yeah, Michael Boyle. Michael's and up again. It's right. a big one, this one, you know, we're talking about just coming up to the... If he can actually get connected with the other one, Seamus, he'll have the distance. Of course, we've been told just beforehand that there's a winner on the night, so if we finish level, we have to go to extra time. Michael Boyle. He's Great connected. streak. He's, he's got the distance. He's, he's got, got the, the accuracy. He's got and the whole way. Half. Unbelievable score. One, one ten each. Three minutes of added time have been played. Still, uh, that was a brilliant score. That was a brilliant score from inside his own half. I know that we're talking about just you know maybe 70, 75 meters, but it's still a pressure a pressure score. A couple of minutes from time. Can the push Ryan on? Ryan on the ball now. Ryan McMullen. Hearn down the lane, and he's still got it. Yes. And he's cutting in, he's coming in. He he's must feed in. it on, he can't take it in his hand again. And so now he's bottling him up. It's still not cleared, still not even got in his possession. I think that's... There's too many there to get clear with it. And, and so comes out come out with it. McKernan again, isn't it? Now, Cain O'Duffin on the ball. Wins a break. He's got it in his hand. Feeds it on. Looking for Gary Michael Hatton. And then the Oak. And then the Oak having the right battle here. Yeah. And the Oak's on his back Gary, again. Is it going to be a glory for Enda? Feeds it across. Smart. One again by St Mary's. Connor O'Boy coming Wild out. Again. He may get done for over Karen if he doesn't get rid of it. He does get rid of it. Kelmo Duffin's got it. And he's going to be pace. He's striking. He's striking. Looks like it's on target. It doesn't have the legs. No. Nope. Oh, we'll see if a TT. Spilled. But well, it's going to be back cleared. Again. It's going to be cleared. Looks like one trainer's going to re win there first. Dylan Davlin, Shannon Marshall, as best he can. Rory Murray oh, scuffs the strike. It's dropping short. Dora Murphy's the there. Hasn't got the distance. Still in that box. Uh, it it's looks a like free a free out. That's a soft one by some Murray. Okay, we're talking about we've, we've played the five minutes of additional time. The year of the draw, Seamus. Huh? The year of extra time, the year <laughs> of penalties. It'd be heartbreaking for whoever's going to lose well, the we game today. A, we haven't got as far as penalties yet, like, but I think that there's the worst way to lose a, a final. But there it is. Blown up, we're blown up, so we're now going to we're going to extra time. Two ten minutes of periods of extra time. So. We're going to have an extended run here now, and that's that's tough on young players too. We saw two or three of them go down there with cramp. Um, you know, it's difficult for them to you know keep their composure under pressure in, in these type of games. It's, it's it's psychology comes into it too. I mean, who's going to be feeling better at this day? As the Samiris think they've let the the hundred one and the the threw it away. The Cross and Passion feel that they they got themselves back in again. Can, well, have we look now? Never we're waiting here on extra time. Maybe have we look at the goals again? If we can to wind back now. But it ha it was a very very tough game throughout. There was no here we go with it. There's uh, Shane McDonald. Shane McDonald brilliantly blocked by E O Mullen and uh, knocked in by Ryan Ryan McMullen. Ryan McMullen after. So a very very good game there. A very very good goal there. So and Mary's, this we're is the chance, the Dolphins. This is a good, uh, uh, this is the one off the crossbar. Great connection. Great, and we see, you know, that slowed down there fairly well, and yet it's a very, very fast strike, very quick strike. And we're looking at the other one that he had there that, um, you know, he just snatched that a wee bit. But again, O'Diffin created the problem with his pace. 
this is him going again there. And this is the goal for uh, St Mary's in the first half. Gary McElhatton. Oh no, save it's, it's not. It's a save. It's yeah. off the crossbar. It's off the crossbar. Yeah, that's okay. And those were the openings. Any of those air scores, you know, the two that came off the crossbar, a couple of openings there. Um, Crossing passion in one or two openings in the first half as well. They were safe, and we, here we are at extra time. Um, it's not going to be easy for whoever is this much, Seamus, because they'll be looking back on all the, the silly mistakes that have happened. It's yeah, when you're only when you're only scoring one ten, and I'm looking at crossing passion here, I made it that there maybe eight nine wides now, and I wasn't counting accurately. St Mary's, I don't think they're just quite as many wides. Uh, the four in the first half, couple in the second half, they just hadn't as many. But um, you know, you do tend to focus on the negative, the things that got away. I mean, you got to remember too, these guys were only 17, 18 years of age, 16, some of them. Yeah. The skill, to be fair to them, the skill on show tonight has been very, very good. Maybe the, the, the rain coming down hasn't helped with the sort of underfoot conditions and handling of the ball at times, but um, no, I've got to give it to the two sets of players. They're, 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 they're doing their schools really proud. Yeah. And although it's a low-scoring game, it has been entertaining, very entertaining. OK, we're going to have a wee neutral view here now from... Uh, maybe it's not totally neutral here from uh, Owen Sands, the uh, down player. Uh, of course, Owen, you played in the uh, McGeehan Cup final a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Well, a few years ago, yes. Yeah. Uh, seven years ago, to be exact, I think it was the last one playing Casement in uh, 2012. Yeah, it's a big occasion. Yeah, it was actually St Mary's beat us, and mm -hmm. you know, St Mary's and Cross and Passion, they're always two teams who are always contesting it. So, very, very good match there tonight, very tight. Very wet conditions, but yeah. good tight game. And we were saying here, I suppose that the you know players tend to get nervous on and fi going into a final and that type of thing, and think you know on a wet night like this here, we're looking now just on the screen, and you can see the rain coming down past the floodlights there. You know, it's different, difficult enough conditions, and then you have a final wrapped into it, and it's the biggest occasion of these boys' lives, and things don't run to plan. Yeah, no, they always don't, Seamus. I am. Um, I thought the, the boys looked a bit nervous at the start. Conditions have worsened as the games went on. Really, at the start, um, conditions weren't that bad. And the mm -hmm. teams did look a bit nervous. Cross and Passion probably started a bit better, but uh, Samiri's full forward line looked dangerous whenever they get the ball. Like, Bally Castle's keeper has made a couple of good saves. He's kept them in it. Yeah. And um, you, the two goals, um, that it was um, good. Def uh, it was good block by the goalkeeper, but. The player followed on. Good corner yeah, forward. Always gets in. For it. it looked like the Samiri's uh, fullback actually missed it. And sort of sometimes with these low and lights, playing this pitch myself, mm. it can get lost when the ball's coming in at head height. And the the fullback for Samiri's just missed it and then allowed the cross and flash and full forward to get in. Then and then it was a bit of a scrappy goal then, but they all count. Okay, and uh, we're seem to be ready to line out again, maybe for uh, extra time, or at least Samiri's are out in the pitch here. Give us a call. Who's going to win it? Um, well, it's very tight to call. I think if St Mary's can get the ball into their full forward line, I think there's another goal in there. But uh, cross passion, they're hard to put away, and they haven't gone away in this game, so they yeah. can go either way. Yeah, and you did notice there's one or two players there go down with cramp and yeah. uh, injury and one yeah, thing or another. They're, that they're, could be a factor as well. Yeah, like these boys are probably all 16, 17, 18, so on a heavy pitch, it'll, it'll take it out of their legs. Okay. You know, so as the game goes on, you will start to see them cramp up. But uh, you, I think that uh, you have company here tonight. Would rather see Cross and Passion win. Yes, my girlfriend Maeve, she's a she's a CPC woman, so I'm I'm neutral. But uh, I'll not tell you who she's Nob for. Nobody's <laughs> neutral in this. Yeah. Thanks very much, anyway. No problem, yes. Thank you. So she was uh, Cross and Passion that went in. I don't know how much of a factor this is going to be. Um, in the, in the start of the second half, we'll see who starts the best. But cross passion within the change room, some areas have stayed out. So it can go two ways, that. You know, often you, you look back in a match and, and point to these things as, as reasons why you've started or slowly or quickly. So we'll uh, see. I suppose it depends on how long it takes them to get out again. The referee has signalled that he wants them out again. He's, he's signalled the five minutes of uh, preparation time is over. He's whistled twice and uh, there's no signing. 
as a manager yourself, you probably would want them inside. You get them calmed down a wee bit, talk a few things to them. You know, whenever you're out in the pitch there, there's still the distraction of the crowd. You, you could argue that that's one thing of it, but the other side of it is too that these guys are staying out in the conditions. So they're not going to end the dry, so they have to come back out and reset. So maybe that works in their favour. But again, this is starting about. It doesn't, I don't doesn't know. help you. And no, no ball to play with. No. I see Keel McCarron has got her pucking a ball about there now, but yeah. we, we are coming back out again. And that's and Shimas and Shimas. Ball it. We look to see now just where they're lined up here and we're Endo and Shimas McCauley looks to be the two that are going to midfield, are they? And we're we're tossing, again. tossing again for yeah. What way are we going to shape up here? Looks like we're playing the way we are. St Mary's are going to be playing. No, St Mary's are going to be playing towards Malone Road. Then. We're going to stick with uh, what we finished in the second half. At least that seems to be the. Yeah. Uh, so two ten minutes. Two ten minute spells, and. Uh, we call the penalties after that. And after penalties, it's paper, scissors, stone. Is that right, Seamus? Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Colin Murray must be at overtime now. <laughs> overtime pay. Looking again at... Can you see Enda and Oak coming on to this ball, bursting through the centre, taking the score? Uh, no phone trainer has his way here. Yeah. Michael's on the just keep it out. Fed back. Oh, oh, down. Just showed too much of it. Kiel McKeown again. I see him. And it's Emma Kiel O'Connor's got it. Oh, he's dropped it again. Sweeped it's out. No, nothing clear. And here's Rory Murray coming on to the ball. Fumbled it again, every ball and seems to be dropping oil. and spelling it's and it's out conditions. Just not coming up for anybody. And Gary McElhatton and runs we on break the here now. Plays it out. plays it wide. Looking for O'Duffin again. O'Duffin again. No, he's not getting it clean this time. Three on two. And Enda Oak's the one that comes away with it. And he's Enda Oak has played good ball into the half forward line in the uh, you know, but it just always hasn't paid off by the half forwards. But he's played, he's tried to play ball to them rather than just lashing it. Owen Trainer did really well there. That was a great steal, fed it off to McKernan, who's driving through. Fed it really wide. well, but it's going wide. wide. Russia blood. <laughs> oh, great take by Shimmy McCauley. Feeds it up a lane, but there's nobody here. He didn't have a distance on it. Good take. Don Turchell. It's gone over the line, up. I well, think. No, it's still in. It's still in. Shimmy's run on to it. No, he's still no stick. Hurt. No stick. And Rory Murray wins it again. He throws it up right um, for a block. Oh, he's lost that one. I thought it was blocked off of her. Colin McGlynn. We've got the crowd going here now. The free man and the Oaks now calling for a three with a short one. Where he got a hurdle, but it wasn't enough. Down to Evelyn. Down to Evelyn. Into O'Connor. Has O'Connor got it? Tom the deck again. It's Ryan McMullen's run on it. Let's get round him on. It looks like he's having a pass. Oh, keeper spilled it. It's on the deck. Whip on the ground, yes. it's a goal for Cross and Passion. Ah, there, look. That's Michael O'Boyle, is it? No, 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 it's uh, number oh. 22. It's Conor Mullen. Conor Mullen, well done. Conor Mullen. He was hungry, it's quite similar to uh, uh, the, the well, previous see if we Can we look at that in the game there before the puck out? Maybe. Maybe not, no, we'll just follow the play. So Gary McElhatton went to the game for St Mary's around the middle. Yep. Turns and drives it up Gary the field. Gary McElhatton's ball in. That's a big score, though. A goal is a big score this 100%. game. 100%. So Gary wins it again. Jimmy and it's right into him. the danger area. The Earl Murphy's looking to knock it down to himself. No. 
That looks like John McAllister coming out very out. strong. Uh, clearance in. Clearance in. Mickey Boyle's out first. Knocks the ball away. Fergal, Mc Fergal just dropped it. McKiernan. We can't. Fergal Mc uh, kill McKiernan again. Oh, well, the Shimmy McCauley burst through. Sweep it over. And, great score. and that's a score. Oh, no. Keeper no. saved it. It's on the hey. box. Kill McKiernan. Go. Throw some passion. Goalkeeper mistake there, probably. It just looked like it was going to sneak over. A keeper got his hurdle to it. Dropped it in the big, box and killed no kind of a smart. in the box there. Caused confusion. Take a wee look at it. So in a flash, get a wee look goals. at it again here. Seamus McCauley breaking. Seamus McCauley, it looked like over the bar. Goalkeeper took it down above the in bar. Above his head but it just did very well. Kill him, kill him in full forward. Did very yeah. well to, to sweep it back and knock it in. Yeah. Shimmy McCauley has just won the next ball again here. It's all going across and passions well. Yeah. Just a couple of breaks and they're away. And that's Conor Mullen. And, and that's Wade. Wade. Goal scorer, a couple of minutes ago. Two goals. Two goals in a couple of minutes there. So Mary's really need to get back into the game. They need to get on yeah. the ball. Put the ball on the forwards to do a bit of damage. Well, Crossing Passion got the goal in the second half. There was time to recover. There isn't really a lot of time in a year to talk about no. no extra time. And Fergal McKernan. That's a good score from Fergal. Bally Castle are pushing on. They're calling for a stoppage here. It's Cramps Conor on Boyle. both teams. Conor Boyle. Conor O'Boyle looks like that yep. blood sub made, made of a factor of him. Right there, we're looking at the goal again there. Not properly cleared there, and you can see there is Conor Mullen that comes. And it's just a, it's that, it's that sharpness on the breaking ball. Yep, similar the to the same, first goal. Same thing that Ryan Mullen did at the beginning. Here we go there, Shimmis. McCauley, so he kind of scuffs it. Yep. Just watch Keane and it Connor was well here. over the bar there. Goalkeeper's off balance. Brilliant. Didn't take it down properly. Finish off by Keane O'Connor. Uh, Dylan back on again. Yeah, Connor Boyd just looked like he can't continue. And the keeper's headed straight to Shamie McCauley again. And all Shamie people. McCauley strikes it straight over the bar. It's all going Bally Castle's way. We're looking five minutes into this, into out of time here, and we're looking at an eight point lead. I can't see St. Mary's coming back. I can't see St. Mary's coming back from this year. Especially in their performance in this first half. They haven't got a, a hand of the ball hardly in this first half of the second, or the end, extra time. So Owen Mays on it again, feeds it lovely back to Owen Trainer. Ross a combination. Has to be a big score here, and it's gone wide. Of course, it doesn't have the accuracy. No. Just goes wide. So Mays are just, you know, just need that score now. We're looking at another substitution warming up here, I think. Oh, great catch again, Ryan McMullen. He's on his bike. Takes a wee jink to the side, strikes off his right hand, and puts and it over the ball. Another one. And Cross and Passion look to be going out of sight here unless the Mary's going to... I don't even think a point is going to do them any good here. It's going to have no. to be a goal. And that can create problems too because you're trying to force it. But this, yeah. cross and, this is like a different Cross and Passion team we're seeing here. Clinical, different, different team simple. from you know, most of the second half. Yeah. Spilling again. Spilling again. So Shimmers McCauley there. Castle. Nice wee tap. Fergal McKeon on it again. Yeah. Turns on to his right side. Feeds it on. It's Connor Mullen. Only Connor passed Mullen. him on. Fergal's run Fergal's through. through. Got it back. Has to take his point. Only does. Two points in a row for Fergal. Yeah, and again, the wee man, Connor Mullen, laid it off nicely for him. Invited him to come running on to it in space. Kilno definitely looks like he's just pulled up the hamstring here. One trainer's faded on in the middle. Oh, did he pick it off the ground? He did. It's a free in the Bally Castle. Harsh, Bad luck harsh. by Delta Wilson there. Everything's going for Bally Castle just at the yeah. moment. Now, okay, they're making things happen as well, look, but you know, when your tail's up, your tail's up. It's hard from a Samiri's perspective too to, to sort of they pick it up from this know, psychologically point. even to try and lift themselves now when they're 10 points behind they look up at the scoreboard and they see 314 to 110 where they were seeing 110 each no, 
Mark Reid's play again. You go back to you go back to five minutes before the end or when we're going into added time and Michael Boyle put over two frees to level it. Uh, and at that point St Mary's had the upper hand. They were the more incisive team, they were driving forward and now it's completely changed. Build there by one yeah. minute, balls in the rock. Nearly as if nothing's going to go right for St Mary's just And that's just pop straight in the Ryan McMahon's hand there, lovely. And he fluffs the pass. Driven back up a straight, the sweeper. Oh, he fumbles it, St Mary's make it a bit of a chance here, but it looks like Billy Castle have got a few sweepers back in the cover in the space. Straight the one mare again, feeds it up a lane. Kill no Duffin. Uh, he slipped. It's looked like he's going to be battled up here. Yeah, just closed down, completely. Down, completely. closed down completely. Yeah, momentum has swung completely against them. Conditions aren't going to help either if you're trying to get back into the game. Oh, and Trainer wins it again, lovely. Trainer Under pressure. Done, trainer done a good bit of work in the middle of the field. Very industrious player, very yeah. industrious. It looks like Marcus Toner's being ready to be brought on for St Mary's here. Marcus is a Davids hurler. Play for the Celtic yeah. Challenge team for Antrim this year, one all Ireland Celtic Challenge. 12. It's Darnett Delaney that's coming off. Is it? I haven't seen anybody coming off, maybe. Has he come off and all? Oh, here he is, yeah. Marcus Toner. Involved a good bit earlier on, but not so much later. And that's. Is that a point? Wade. Wade. That's half time. Yeah. And he's asking for him to stay on the pitch, I think. He's just straight switch around, he's asking for. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that management can do at this stage anyway, you know. One minute, five minutes, ten minutes of a break. The Most subs have been made. Yeah, and the momentum has been lost by St Mary's. Everything's with cross and passion now, and all they have to do is hold on to it. The only thing I can hope for is that maybe a repeat, a repeat or a flip performance in the second half here. St Mary's get an early goal and maybe put a bit of pressure on. But the two goals a changed it. Two goals changed it in the first four minutes. It's good to see so many of these boys out, Seamus, that uh, have come up through the development squads within Antrim. Yeah. We had a celebration event last week in St Mary's where we brought all the development squad players together and their parents. Right. So it, it, things are slowly slowly improving. Well, I think that there, there has to be a feel-good factor has to return to Antrim hurling in general. And I'm talking about casements part of that there. Yeah. There's a lot of things part of it, you know, and that's why an initial of Gale Fast uh, you know, people, you know, are seeing it as something that's going to work, but everybody has to work with it rather 100%. than just, you know, hope that something else does work for you. We're into the second half then. Oh, Seamus he looks like he's hurt. down in that. And if he blew that up quickly, I don't know where that suggests yeah. Seamus has hurt himself. And I think maybe there's even a chance they might have been swinging on it or something like that there, but I think there's cramp there. You know, for a number of these players now, you've seen five or six of them go down with cramp you're really talking about just surviving the last ten minutes and the referee is not going to wait until somebody with cramp improves no well one by Gary McElhatton two men tailing him still McElhatton has got a lot of possession but he hasn't uh, you know he hasn't been able to strike the ball he hasn't been able to you know get the you know really incisive passes and yeah uh, Credit the defenders of Bally Castle too, you know, you gotta say, and Dog and the rest of the case have marshalled them well. Mm -hmm. 
this is just wasting time for some Mary's yeah. here. They really need to get the ball, get it into the danger position. 65. Is it 65? I think so. No, it's giving a white ball. Oh, I give a white. Give a white ball. So we're just winding down the clock basically here now. I think the game has been won. Um, those two goals really did the damage. Oh, and he's... There's a run on now for Conor O'Mullen, if we can get him. Oh, and Trenner, oh, well Ron May, a great wee well flick run. tackle. But still in the danger zone. And if it's down there, Samiris can't score. Yeah, the present passion, I'd be delighted. Keep it in there all day, also. Dan Murray coming out with it. Being chased by four. Bolly Castle, man. And he gets rid of it. Did well. I'll probably need to look at, you know, see who the player of the match now at the moment. Um, for um, for Cross and Passion, who would you think, uh, Damien? Um, I suppose you've earned Oak McGarry, he's did really well in defence. Uh, I think Jamie McCauley as well, midfield, has been very strong. Yeah. Um, I suppose if you were asking me to. To, to pick him on a match out of those two or the Cross and Tyson team, I, I'll, I'll probably give it to Shamey just because of his performance well, what, what in the. What about Mary's? Like, remember, in normal times, St Mary's weren't that far off. No, Caelan McCarron has been, been, been a man since centre half back for, for St Mary's. Um, you know, Caelan O'Duffin as well has been very, very dangerous, but it's sort of came in and out of it. Owen Trainer as well. Owen Trainer worked his guts off in midfield. There's John McAllister coming off now to the tears of the crowd. Yeah. Or sorry, Shamey McCauley. That's Seamus McCauley. Yeah, team captain. Uh, First pump to the crowd there. Uh, so we're now looking at uh, 73 minutes in. And you can tell just the way that Seamus McCauley came off the pitch there that the players know the game is over. Uh, well, the management wouldn't be making that change at this stage if it was in any way no. tight, so yeah. Well, he did have... He did... Um, he did show a bit of cramp there too. He went down very quickly yeah. and just to throw into the second half of, out of time. Going in, it's a long ball in, but it's too far. It's gone wide, has it? Yep. He just got a hurl there, but he didn't, get, and didn't manage to keep it in. So we're looking at... Yeah. Another another substitution going on here, number seven. It's Conlon McKinley coming like back on back again. On again. Um, like and we can use we can use six subs in out of time, can't we? It's a new game as far as I'm aware, yeah. yeah. And that's Is that Michael O'Boyle? Michael O'Boyle. The manager's giving them a wee bit of a him on Jamie McCauley giving yeah. them their moment of joy coming off the field that cheers that crowd. Well earned for a play. It's those couple of points there that made a big difference now. And here's Becky McGarry, Christy Oak, or Christy, flex it over. But he didn't manage to pick it up again in the other side. So Mary's weren't going to let him away with that. Who's coming out with it now? McKeel and O'Connor is it over the ball now. McKeel McKernan wins it again. Brings it out of the fence. Scoop Gives a lovely ball to own trainer. He doesn't have a hurl at this stage. Yeah. And number 13. Ryan McMullen Ryan just McMullen. brings Shanks it wide. They're tired limbs out there too. 100%. Five minutes left. and I say it's hard for the Samiris men to motivate themselves at this stage. Yep. Yep. There's another ball coming through. He's pushing on. Uh, Dylan Dylan Devlin. Devlin. Oh, and he was Devlin. taken out off the passer. It looked like a free end to me, but the referee didn't give it. No. Clear by Cale McKernan. Down into Dara Murphy. Gary McElhoney again, McElhoney picking McElhoney it up with Fergal McKinnon, McKinnon. His, his number on the opposite side, picks it up, feeds it off. Um, Conliffe McKinley um, plays it straight in, Cale McKernan, or O'Connor's under it, but the ball breaks. Yeah, Sweeped out by Don Murray, well done. Too little, too late maybe at this stage, and as you say, they want the ball, but they are in the feed, yeah. they need to be doing damage. So Mary's of a man down, Dara Murphy looks like he's out. It's, it's yeah, they're going down all over the place with crap. Yeah, and they need, they need those it. players in the forward. The ball's played through their own crossing. It has, has a goal from too far out. It has to be a goal. Very goal. easy save for T.T. Smith there. 
Still going to have the pass. John McAllister clears it well. Still. There's two men to Mary's now. They didn't even expect that ball to come down there, Tim. They're dropping like flies at this stage. Dara Murphy's coming off. He, he can't come off until uh, Ryan McMullen, is it? Picked it up again. He's clear this time. And the referee's going to pull it back anyway. So free into to Bally Castles. We're six minutes into the second half of added time. With a substitution here for... Uh, St Mary's is it? There's not too many scores I can remember in the second half. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, if even any. Brent, uh, Ruben McLean's coming off and number 18, uh, Mark McLean. Mark McLean, Bally Castleman. Yeah. Heard of the county this year too. I'm thinking at this stage the Bally Castle management are just giving everybody a chance to win a medal on the field. No, well, That's an excellent that. score there. As a manager, it's a. a, 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 it's a that's Ryan McMullen, I think, is from free there. Well, as a manager, this is an you ideal like, situation. Yeah, yeah, an ideal because you're rewarding effort. You're yeah, rewarding the guys have trained hard all year, and mm -hmm. you can only pick 15 in the start. And even in a tight game as a manager, you don't want to be making changes that might affect the game yeah. negatively. So this is, this is a luxury for Cross and Price, and it's brilliant. They're able to run out all their subs and involve them and as much as everybody else who started. It's all a great take by Andy McGarry. Like a ball, and he's looking for his own score at this he's stage. He's got it, he's got it. He's got it. That's the glory one. He That's the glory, and he's down with cramp. <laughs> no, I don't know if he took a walt there, actually. Was he, no, was no, he struck? Or did he just go down? I think he just went down with cramp. It's uh, a big burst straight through. Maybe take a wee look at that score again. No. Um, just going to follow it on here. No, on. Yeah, I think it was cramp. I think it was cramp. He's yeah, he, he did her out of the fence. Yeah. You see in We're looking there. at three seventeen to uh, one ten, and you know, thirteen points. Like you couldn't have seen it. They've doubled their score in, in out of time <laughs> here, and some beers haven't scored at all. It's crazy. I think this is another one then. Uh, I think Chris Clark. And Connor Haynes will be disappointed with the final result, but I have you to know, say there's a, big, there's a big effort in ordinary time. They were in control of the game in the second half for long periods, and I think you know. I think they should be very proud of their players. The boys have done really well for them, and it's just that that opening period and extra time where where, where Cross and Pison just seem to get the rub of the green, they got, they got and then they got better and better. So momentum's a big thing. Yeah, we're looking at one minute on the clock. He's not going to add on too much of. Injury time, I wouldn't have thought. I think he tried to keep it going as much as he could, uh, even with cramps and stuff like that there. He didn't slow the ball up. No, I mean, the referee's been good today. Mm. When you speak to the managers of the two teams, he might have a different opinion, but I think no, generally I th he's been fair enough. I, th I think he's, he's been fair enough. There's, but there hasn't, you know, boys have gone out to play harder. Yeah. And that's easy to referee at any time. Tiredness probably contributed to that. Frustration that stays yeah. again too, Seamus. Mm -hmm. Oh and me. Yeah, you come back there to the disappointment of the Samiris. It is very, very disappointing to lose a, a final at end, but to lose a final in those you know, situations there where you're, you're two so points close. up, mm. going into add it, going into injury time and just you know, Ballycastle gets those two extra points. Not saying they weren't deserved, but they get those two extra points, and then it becomes a completely different game. That's well struck. Shea McDonald. Shea McDonald. Substitute. And that's, very and that's the final whistle. Three eighteen to one ten. And there was only one team in X in out of time, extra time. Uh, I suppose. As you keep saying, the two goals that came at the start, Connor and Mullins' goal, followed quickly by Caelan O'Connor's, game over. Yeah. Things goal hard. was going to be a big score, and then it just pulled away. Even one goal was, was a bit of a killer at that stage, and I think that probably led the Samiris boys to drop their heads a little bit. But they should be proud. Uh, they're devastated there, and I know what that feels like, coming off a pitch not 
not winning, but uh, the effort they put in today and throughout the rest of the year, I have to say that as, a, as an ex Mary's man, I'm very proud of them and fair play to Chris and, and uh, Connor for, for the effort that they put in. This wouldn't have been a fancy St Mary's team at the start of the season, so um, for them to be disappointed at this stage is, is, a, is a credit to them. And so that's sport, James. You know, yeah. someone's got to lose. We're looking, we're looking now at Cross and Pison picking up their 10th title. They picked up two in the 70s, 77 and 78. They picked up two in the 90s, 93 and 94. But since Joe Casti has come in in the early 2000s, uh, reorganised, restructured the sixth form in the school, sixth form sports in the school, made it an honour to stay on a school and play uh, uh, McGee and Cup Hurling. They've picked up six of the ten titles that they've won since 2006, and the management team of Joe Casty and Owen Kearney has to take a lot of credit for that. Definitely, fair play to them. You can see the sustained effort is is paying off and. I have a funny feeling that this is maybe only a start of it for Cross and Pison over the next few years coming into a bit of a, a crescendo. Um, St Mary's um, will always be there thereabouts. You know yourself, they'll be definitely be back again next year. But um, this is definitely a very, very sort of yeah. well prepped Cross and Pison team. Uh, and, and Cross and Pison appreciate it all the more because it's been five years since the last title. 100%, yeah. And even since they've been in the final, it's been a few years too. So. It makes it all the more sweeter. We're just waiting on the presentation here, and as you know yourself, once a game ends, it's very, very difficult to get a crowd of players and friends, supporters, parents, all coming rushing out onto the pitch. It's very hard for to get them all together together just to do the presentation end of the thing, the main part of the evening, really. Yeah. Seamus McCauley, I think, is a crossing passion captain. Yeah, he is indeed. Seamus McCauley had Manson that coached them this year for the county manors. Great, great lad, great hurler. Um, and he was, he was actually telling me that he has linkages with Belfast himself. So his family came from our, has come from Ardoin as well. So, it's a good um, move then. <laughs> good move for Bally Castle, <laughs> I'll tell you. They're, they're very happy with it. But no, he's a good lad. Yeah. We're just looking down here at some of the celebrations that are going on down there on the pitch and um, I can't see anybody coming out of that there Seamus McCauley no, or anybody coming else Seamus coming, coming, coming over now with his yellow helmet yeah say Keelan O'Connor there he's coming he's coming over towards and I think it's going to be Ear Archer or coming out last scale Party Duffy uh, who's going to be making the presentation at least to the man of the match and I'm sure that'll be Una Morta on behalf of Danska Bank that'll make a presentation then after that to the winning captain which of course is the one and the same player I think for the look of things we'll see who the player of the match is anyway I think it's brilliant Seamus saying this um, you know kids being rewarded in this way great crowd here tonight although it was a bit of a tension within the game mm -hmm. the, for the kids to be able to play in this stadium in front of this crowd on a Friday night Friday night nights it's brilliant and the road medals are heroes for their, for their pupils in their school and all the other kids here, so it's brilliant to see. Is this what we miss about Casement Park too? That we have a, you know, a stand, a crowd, yeah. lights, everything there? Oh, well, I grew up in Casement and going watching matches just consistently every week, so it's, uh, I know how, how much there we're, we're missing look, it. Just looking down at Parik Duffy, handing over the Player of the Match award to uh, Seamus McCauley. Very well deserved, he had. You know, he did he did hold his position in the middle of the field, he didn't drop back there and he picked up a desperate lot of ball right the whole way through. He did, you have to say, he was, he was pivotal in the sort of second or the opening period of injury time. And here's got the trophy and he's gonna go for the traditional lift on a wee second here. So yeah. Yes, it's it's in a murder on behalf of Danske Bank. And that's the pictures that you're going to be picking up from Curly McIlwain there. I see him down there, Sean Paul McKillop, the Saffron Gale website. And it's fantastic the coverage that we're getting now of uh, Gaelic Games in Antrim. As the traditional newspapers have declined, 
we still have the digital media and we're getting a lot of coverage there from the likes of Curly McBrillian. Well, Curly McBrillian, Saffron Gale has, has picked up where the papers have sort of disappeared from and I mean every match you go to now there's great coverage, the kids have got action photos of themselves and their teammates and matches like this that they'll look back on for years to come. They're, 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 they really are role models. I mean, I just mentioned Seamus McCauley there. I was, I was at the cool camp for Bally Castle this year, and Seamus and a lot of the other hurlers were all coaching at the cool camp. They're giving back their own clubs, not just yeah. about themselves. And I think that's part of the Galefast idea too, that you get get uh, young fellas of 16, 17, 18 involved in coaching, that they, they become lifelong coaches as a result. 100%. I mean, we were looking to, to bring these guys on board as, as maybe young whistlers and coaches, but um, it's just the impact of these guys coming along to a juvenile session as a big role model has a, has a, great, has a great positive. But they're going, the CPC are going bananas now with the, yep. the trophy, which is their right. Yeah. I think um, that's a new Mickey and Cup has only been presented uh, since I think 2013 was the last was the first presentation of it. So uh, it's since it moved out of Casement Park, we've probably had a new trophy to present each year, and um, that's only the second time in Crossing Passion have got their hands on that there one. But as I said, the old Mickey and Cup they won it twice in the 70s, twice in the 90s, then picked it up again in 2006, 2000. Um, uh, and eight or nine, then a couple of there, and those ones they went on and won all Ireland as a result of it. Uh, on the basis of what we saw over the first half, first hour tonight, you wouldn't see an all Ireland in that team. But maybe if you look at the uh, extra time performance, you might see it. Yeah, there's. I mean, you, uh, if you were being critical about the the cross and passion performance on the Samiris performance, you would have said they underperformed, put it down to nerves or whatever you wanted to do it, but. They've now got a few months or a couple of weeks anyway to prepare for the for the next stage. So yeah, they can rate those wrongs. And I know that these guys are, are well, well prepared by their coaches and their management. So they'll be looking at the video analysis, they'll be looking at where they went wrong, how they can improve. So, you know, uh, fingers crossed yeah. when they get to the semi final they'll be competitive and they'll do their best. And as the principal said there, um their Kogi teams have been leading the the drive in the last couple of years there they've won I think three in a row at senior level in Camogie, five in a row at uh, under 16 level and those have gone on to All-Ireland semi-finals so the the club or the school itself knows what pre preparation for an All-Ireland series is all about now um, and, and, and that in fact has inspired these boys I was reading um, Joe's article during the week, Joe Cassidy's article and he was saying that the fact that the boys were watching the girls training for All-Ireland they were out, they were working over the winter it made them a bit envious, so it maybe pushes these guys on to work out a wee bit harder in training, and, mm -hmm. and fair play, they've got their rewards today. It, um, just looking at it again, they're not in back in action again until February, and that's a long gap. Um, this whole idea of finishing a competition in the school in the club year that we're talking about bringing in in, in Gilly Games in general at all Ireland club level, um, you know, it is a big it is is a big gap. Uh, it is a big gap. Um, to hold it, but then you really have to start it all over again. Yeah, it's uh, well. The only thing about it is, I suppose, it it, it, could, it depend on who you're playing against. It could be the same for the other team too. But yeah, you would you would prefer if you're 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 finishing this game that you would be heading on to play your your next game within the next three or four weeks. Problem you have is we're getting close to Christmas and yeah, all the things that go along with you it. You can so see the principle there, and it's always important uh, in all these schools that you have uh, the management of the school very much pushing Gilly Games and uh, you know that means a desperate lot to the teachers that are involved in Gilly Games that they're just not in isolation that they're not working on their own that they're actually getting the support of the school and it does a great job for the school too well it's certainly going to motivate other teachers and anybody who's classroom assistants or anybody who's interested in giving a hand and I know Cross and Price and they're very well um, looked after in that regard they've got plenty of good coaches and um, experience within the staff but things like this here can only help you know yeah. the, you mentioned it earlier about teams that are winning going you know, on the next year making it a wee bit easier to win again so um, if Cross and Passion can use this it certainly can act as a fill up for next year so it's on to them that's it
It's all about Bally, uh, Cross and Passion Bally Castle tonight then. Uh, the 2019 McGeehan Cup and Bally Castle go into double figures. They've got their 10th win. They're now only three behind St. Pat's Mahara and going on the, the way that they, they have been performing over the last while. I think they've picked up six titles in 13 years or whatever around about that time Let's keep going. They're, they're the ones that are setting the bar now for in terms of you know school preparation at this level and given that they've won this this year they've won the Forester's Cup last year which means that they have a good team coming through in lower sixth as well a good team or a good crowd of boys staying at the school and you have they a handful I would say there's at least half a dozen of the boys that were playing here on their on their team that will be here next year again yeah. So, so it's a good foundation then for looking ahead and then pushing on for maybe more titles after it. I've got to say, both Samiri should go away from this and, and, and positively reflect on it too. I mean, as you said, they were winning with an in injury time and they just got the victory snatched away from them at the end. So they shouldn't be too um, hard on themselves. Definitely think it's been um, a successful year for them albeit they didn't make it in the end in the final but going forward for next year if they can build on this year I, I think they can be competitive for next year again so. if we could just maybe look at the impact of the um, you know the substitutions we'll take the first substitution for um, St Mary's there was forced upon them um, and Dana McGeoch who had scored the goal from the penalty more or less had to leave straight after that there yeah. uh, and he's their and free taker too or their yeah. first free taker so I said at the time that it could have had a big effect on the game and I think looking back now it you know it, it made it on it yeah. made it on um, it just made it at times Samiris were kind of lacking that wee bit of punch in the full forward line yeah. so um, Donnan being their captain and maybe their tallies man at times definitely definitely had an effect well Keelan O'Duffin picked up that slack if you mm. like and pushed and his pace and all caused problem. And you think but that one that hit the crossbar Seamus, if that had went in, the, the, the psychology at that stage, what it does to the, the, the Bally Castle team, yeah. that could have been the difference, but there's so many wee incidences like that we could point and, to. And you also look at the impact that the Bally Castle subs had, for example, uh, look at, uh, you take off Oren McGrath, and you put on Shane, Shane McDonald, McDonald, straight away. His impact right away in creating that goal, if you like, or creating the chaos that led to the goal and the two goals in injury time two uh, were both scored by two subs. So, yeah. you know, uh, you have to say that Ballycastle got the substitutions right or they got the response from the substitutions to, to win the match. No, uh, the, sometimes managers can get things right, you know what I mean? And at, at this stage, if I was a manager, I'd be delighted with that. But that's just, it's, sometimes it comes down to luck. I, I, I just think that the, the, the strength and depth within both squads allowed them to bring sort of options on but it, it showed towards the end there that the Ballycastle subs were the difference yeah. as far on the scoreboard OK um, which uh, turning to Jiru and uh, and uh, Tractor at the knee and art because I got the knees are in fact and the knee I can't far be I'm not going to say that I'm 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 going to say uh, so, the Jiro correlation he had to much a gunk here reached our Clarna Scorney and John Nisha because Taskal were in the Mariah and Chin or War Clarna Scorney and Chin because Kulo because Jay Guli Naku Maravi a Jiro and Grafli Maravi on Akta Kalish and a Krisha because the Pasha Vru Shates and Kontasi because Win Shates and Tria Hot Jag and in in Naden Hena Jay on O. Fark and Emraha, all school of honor in and show, EY of Glare. 